Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and in this week's training, I'm going to show you how to create this incredible Kanban board in Excel. It's going to be complete with member filters. We're also going to be able to do project filters based on a certain project or any project. We are also going to show you how you can do this automatic move the Kanban to the board along with a single click, and we're going to show you how to do a drag and drop. We're going to be able to drag and drop any card anywhere else it's going to be incredible training creating brand new tasks or editing tasks we've got that too and a whole lot more i cannot wait to share this with you so let's get started All right, thanks so much for joining me on this training. I cannot wait to share it with you. Well, so what, first of all, what is a Kanban board? Well, a Kanban board is a work management system that's designed to visualize your work. And it comes from a Japanese term meaning visual signal. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna create a process flow from the beginning on the left all the way when things are completed on the right. And we wanna be able to move them very, very easily from one section to the other. So if I move this here, it's gonna go all the way down and keep moving it as we process. Now, I also wanna be able to drag and drop different types of items from here, from one area to the other, or one task from the other until they get completed. I also want to be able to show specific employees or specific team members as I click on this. So I wanna create these tabs for just specific. I also may want to show only specific projects. If I click on a project, I can show different projects or all projects. I also may want to expand, show the expanded or show a card that's just limited, right? If they're not expanded, if we have a lot of cards, we may want to limit it so we can do that. I also may want to view closed projects or open all projects. And I also want to maybe show only certain priorities, urgent priorities, or maybe we only want to show high priorities. So we can do that. They're all color coded based on a specific priority. So we can set that up. We also may want to filter between categories. We only want to see those ones the design or maybe those only in a development. So this is going to be completely customizable. I'm going to show you how to do that every step of the way. So that's going to be in this week's training con bond board if you do like these trainings i bring these to you for absolutely free each and every tuesday i just ask that you do a few things to help us out and keep this channel going well and that is subscribe that's going to be the first thing you want to do make sure you subscribe and click that notification icon bell there at the bottom that's going to ensure that you get alerted as soon as i create these videos so you can be one of the first to watch them and that's also going to do live chat as we do live chat each and every tuesday i'm there every single tuesday answering your questions in live chat so you hope you'll join us if the time works well for you another thing you can do is also comment below i'd love to hear your ideas your comments your feedback that really helps so i want to keep that alive as well your comments and of course smash that like button that will help the youtube algorithms i create these absolutely free you're welcome to download this using the link down in the description if you want to support the channel a great way to do that is with the 200 workbook zip file i've got that available now that's 200 of my best templates all available in a single zip file and that comes with a complete 200 workbook library what that means is a single click to open up that workbook and a single click to view the video training on youtube so that's gonna help us out it's just 77 dollars that's less than 40 cents a workbook i've got a few bonus workbooks in there as well i'd appreciate that that's gonna help us out all right let's get started on this this is a sample we're going to be creating most of this from the beginning but there's a lot that i've done already so this is what we want to do so i want to have a project i want to have site i want to be able to hide tasks or show tasks if i click on a specific task i want to show those task details i also want to be able to hide that to expand the board and i also want to be able to create new tasks i want to be able to save tasks delete tasks some of that's been done already i'm going to walk you through that so we don't have a many many hour video but we're going to show this drag and drop we'll be able to drag and drop we'll be able to move these tasks forward it's as we get them in there so we can move them to the right and as they process or we're also going to show you how to recreate this really cool drag and drop if you want to move it back to a certain section or forward also we can do a filter and we're going to prioritize those based on 
the priority. So basically, they're always going to be prioritized based on that. So the red's going to come up first. Those are the high priorities, the second, and then go. We do have an admin, which I'll show you. So let's close this out, and we're going to get started on this training. This is the sample, so I'm going to close this one out. And then what I'll do is I'm going to show you. We're going to start with this one here. Now, we haven't created any of the cards. The cards are the individual items in that. We haven't created any of the team members, and we just have a few things on the high. So we're going to go over that with you. Let me go over what components components make up Kanban board and how you can create your own and how this can be bit beneficial in any type of business for any type of work. You can also create something like this and of course create it, make it for sale, you know, because it's a fantastic feature. Customize it for your company or companies like this, or you can create it for your own selling and then sell it on your website. Great feature. Kanban is really, really popular because it's a very simple way to manage your tasks as opposed to one of the more complex project managers. What you can also do is you can take a project project manager and create a s one screen that has this Kanban. So there's different ways of managing projects, different types of screens, whether it's a scheduler or whether it's a Gantt style chart or something like that. This is a Kanban. So it's a different style of viewing and managing your tasks within a project. So what do we have here? So we've got an admin screen here. I want to locate our pictures, our pictures, the team member pictures. Remember those pictures you saw? They're located in this specific folder, right? So we have our the pictures because I want to show pictures of our individual members on that. And I have that inside a folder and so for me I've got we've got four different ones I've got Fred Harold Lisa and Mary those are the folders that's located in so I want to make sure that I map out that so when we pull those pictures up we can pull them from a specific folder so you can do that all you need to do is just have a folder and make sure you're mapping that this is that map folder that we want to create okay all right so we've got that and that's gonna put that I'm just gonna paste that we didn't include a browse but we just put paste in that link right in here I've also got stages now these are linked backlog to do in progress review completed and closed these are the same stages that i've got here they're all linked up here notice that they're you're using an indirect formula b in the column plus one equals true so basically what i've done is i've linked that what do i mean by b in the column how do i link that well obviously you can use a direct link but i use a specific link so that i can just drag it all the way over here it's going to be the same so if i know this is column five i know this is column five right e is column five F is column six and so on and so forth. And I also know our first one's going to come in row six. Our second one's going to come in row seven, right? We know it's column B. So if I want to link that very, very easily, all I need to use is use the indirect. I know this is row six. Row six here is going to end up in column five, right? So if I want to link this, I know this is column five, but I need to link it with row six and B. So it's B plus the column, the column's five, plus one, that's going to give us six, right? So I know that B6 from the admin is going to, and of course, we have A1 style. A1 meaning, you know, it's the cell style, not R1, C1, not row. So if I do that, and it's, since each column is different, it's going to basically take this column, add one, that's going to be the row. So all I need to do is to link it to drag and drop. And that way, as soon as I change something here to like backlogs or whatever I want, it's automatically going to update here okay, so that's important so i want to change it back because inside our tasks we have backlog also i want categories we can create any type of categories i've got all categories and this is important and i've got our list of categories you can create any categories you want this is that same drop down list that's located here it's all of our categories if we make a change it's going to be called categories I also want to show a drop down list here called all categories. So notice this dynamic drop down list, this data validation here is going to include everything here, including the all categories. But this drop down list inside our tasks is just the simple task. So every single task that we create, we can save a task, new task and delete task. Every task is going to have a task name. We have a project. Notice we have a list of projects, and I'll go over that with you. And also, we have a priority urgent. Now, priority urgent, high, normal. This is the other thing that's going to come from this. Again, we have our priority list, and I've assigned a color, and I'll go over the number in a moment. And I've assigned a color for each priority and a given number. And I also want the show all above that. Why is that? Because inside our Kanban board, if we're going to show priorities, I also want a data validation for all four of the priorities and a show all so when i click that i want to make sure that 
all priorities show up as we saw in the sample. Same thing with all categories. And I also want to display cards from a certain date. I want to make sure that that date, anything after a certain date, right? We don't want to show the, sometimes we don't want to show every card that got completed in history. Maybe we want to show it based on a specific date. So only a cards from a specific date, maybe after a specific date, right? If you want to show only cards for the current month or something like that, we have a date validation here. When we make a change to a card, it changes an update. Notice we have an updated date here, right? I want to know when that last card was changed. Was it changed from backlog to do and so on and so forth. We also have the stage. What does the current stage of that? Is it on backlog? Is it to do? Is it in progress? If we create a new task, it's going to be probably set the default as the first, right? So we can do that when we create a new task. We may want to set the default here. Now, when I click new task, notice we got that macro working. I'll go over quickly in that macro. However, if you've watched any of my trainings before, these kinds of things are relatively basic, these forms that we've done. So we're going to go a little bit quickly over this form style because I want to put the focus on this Kanban, on this one. This is the one I want to really focus on. So this is just a basic form. I put these in yellow. I've used conditional formatting because they're required. As soon as we fill it in and we put in site design, as soon as we add it, that yellow is going to go away. We're going to use conditional formatting for that. So if we click on the home and we go in the conditional formatting and manage rules, we see that we have a conditional formatting. When we edit that rule, we see that it's going to be format only cells that contain blanks. And I want to assign a yellow background to those cells that contain blank. What that's going to do is that's going to alert the user that tell them that these required. If we try to save a task, it's going to tell us to make Make sure to fill in the required field. So as we fill in those uh, fields, we can set a priority. We set a, a sign to a, a member. We give it a category and then we give it a details. Then we can then save it because it's going to be required. So when we save that task, it's going to save. It's going to give us a message saying the task is saved. Great. So we have that. We know it's been saved. Now let's take a look. We've been through the admin screen. We understand this. I'll go over these numbers a little bit later, but we've got everything. This is our admin screen. It's simple. What we do is we have a list of task cards. Now, remember those cards in the sample, all those cards that got created. Every time we create a new task is going to end up in this list. Notice the one we just assigned. We don't have a we didn't have a project ID. I'll go over that in a moment with you. And but we want to make sure that we have everything over here. I'm going to show you how we add these member ID and project. That's going to be with a formula that we're going to go over an index match and then an update date. As soon as it's been updated, we're going to be able to update it. So we've got a list of that. So we've got all the task ID, task name. So everything's going to be sorted inside this little database table here. Then we have projects. It's going to be very simple. Just a regular, we have a project ID, a project name, and an open or closed status, right? Sometimes if we close a project, we may not want that to appear. So we've got a macro. It's going to allow us to show, remember we saw view close projects or not, so we can view that or not. We also have team members. Now a team member has a member ID, their name and email. This could be helpful if we decide to add some email automation later on. A picture, remember we have the picture names. Now those picture names coincide exactly with the picture names that we've set here inside our folder. We want to make sure that those names are exact. So we have that and we also have a status an active or inactive. We may want to filter only those employees, show those only those employees with an active status and then run that through an advanced filter so we can have that. OK, so we're going to go over that. So that's basically everything that makes up this individual. We also have some named ranges that we're going to go over already. So let's go into the named ranges and take a look at some of the named ranges I've created. It saves us a little bit of time. We've got categories here. Notice we've got the categories here. Those are going to be all the categories as the data data validation. The criteria and the exact, those are all created based on advanced filters. So that's done in VBA. We have a member ID using offset. We've been over this offset if you haven't. Basically offset allows us to create a dynamic named range. As our named range grows, we see that we also have that. So it's going to be using offset. We're going to always start out with the header. Notice A2 is the header. Why do we start out with the header? That way it's not going to present an error when we have no data or we delete rows. It won't have it because that header is always going to remain. But if we're going to include that header inside A1, we want to make sure to have one row down. We're going to offset it one row down. We're not offsetting any columns. Then what we want to determine how many rows that we're counting. We're going to use count. Again, we're going to use that header row, but we want to exclude it from the results. That's why we've got minus one. And we want a single column. I like these way as opposed to using tables because I can be more specific. I can really focus on the names 
individually and I can use those names in formulas and it's a lot clearer for me. I know a lot of you prefer using tables. It's more of a personal preference, right? So I, I per personally preference, I find tables a little bit limiting. Okay, so we have a member name You're also using the offset. I've got a priority inside, of course, we have the priority that's set here in the admin. We have a project ID again using offset, project ID, and project name. So as you can see, it's there's some consistency inside here. Stages, of course, that's from our we have a, a stages. We're going to need to know the named range of that. I want a task ID based on the number of tasks and a task name. So you see it's really consistent. Each one has a name. Each one has an ID. And that's it. That's pretty much it for the named ranges. So we're going to create that and that's going to help us inside our code. All right. So what do we want to do? Well, the first thing, let me just go over very briefly how we save these tasks. Now, notice I'm going to use what's called data mapping. If you haven't seen this before, I want to take this task name located in F3 and I want to map it to the task card. So notice we've got this F3. This data mapping is going to be consistent. I also want to do a task ID, a ta project ID, and a member ID. So when I select, let's say, a project ID, I want to have that project ID. I now got the project name, but I want to show that project ID, and I want to show it to right here. So we're going to write a formula to do that, and I'm going to start out right here. It's going to be equals if error, just in case there's any error, I want it to show blank. So the first thing I want to do is I want to index. I'm looking for, what am I looking for? I'm looking for that project ID. So I'm going to look for project ID. That's what I want to index right here. And I want to use, what is the row? Well, I need to find that project. It's going to be based on the match. And I'm going to look up this project name. And I'm going to base it on that project name, that named range that we created, which is right here. I want an exact match, so it's going to be zero. And I want to use a single column, which is here. And I also want, if there's an error, what I want to show blank. So that's going to get us that project ID. I also want to do the same thing for member ID equals, in this case, what we're going to do is, again, if error also, in case there's an error, I want to show blank. This time we're indexing as well, but we're going to index, in this case, the member ID, which is here. And I also want to use the row number. I want to use a match to find it. It's going to be based on this member right here if we look it up and it's going to be based on that member name that's why we created a member name i also want an exact match here and i want to do a single column if there's an error i want to show blank here so that is the formula for member id so if i save that tasks right here this one that we just it's going to automatically save again that we go back into the task cards we now have a project id we now have a member id we don't have any date because there's no but no updates to that as well but we, if we put in a date it's going to show up okay so we have those formulas that's where i'm going to save our work now what i want to do now is go over just some briefly some of the code here and i have that inside the vba so what we'll do is go into the developer and visual basic if you don't have this you can use alt f11 to get you there that'll be a quick way and then you can show that okay so we've got some kanban macros we're going to create these macros very soon and we've got some task card creators to help move things along what i did is i created some macros already and they're relatively simple if you're not if you're not new to vba they're very simple if you're new to vba i can go over them briefly with you but remember this particular training we're going to focus more on the kanban macros and less on the task card first thing we did is create a new task remember that was the button that's the macro that's been assigned to this new task button so what do i want to happen when i click this new task button I want to clear the fields basically all i want to do so and that's going to include also this task id whatever task has been selected i want to show it inside this cell b7 so i want to make sure to clear out b7 as well task row is going to be based on this task id notice every single task has a task id so what i want to know is i want to know the row that's associated so if i put in one here i want row four to show up so inside the combo, if I put in that task ID one, I want four to show up. Again, we're going to use a match formula for that. So we're going to match basically whatever's in B7 based on the task ID. We're going to add three because this will return one, right? It's the first one found, but I want the row number, not the first one found. To do that, I need to add three because I want that row number, right? When I click here, I don't want the I don't want the first one. It's been the first one found, but I don't want one. I want four. I want that row number. So we're adding three to that. So that's going to get us that row number. So we want that and i also want to know the next task id and to do that we're going to use the max formula remember this tax id is 
task ID is based on numerical. So we want to make sure when you use the max formula, plus one, it's going to be the maximum of all the task IDs plus one. If there's an error, why would there be an error? Well, there'd be an error if we don't have any tasks at all. If there's an error, what do I want to show up? I want one. One is the default value. If there's an error, that'll be the first task ID. Notice start at one. That would be if there's no data at all. Otherwise, I want to show the next one so that we have that next number available. So when we add, we know it's going to be 23 is so the next one added. So that's it for the tasks. So basically, when we create a new, we're going to clear out some fields here. I'm going to set J5. What I want to do is I want to set the initial stage. Remember, when we click, we, we set this backup, right? I want to know that initial, that first stage, which is located right here inside B6. I want to set that. I want to put that directly inside here, inside J5. So that's all we do with the next line of code. J5 is going to equal admin. I'm going to set that initial stage. And also, I want to select F3, but I only want to select it if our current sheet is Kanban. If it's not, this is the sheet name Kanban. That's the code name that we said. If it is, I want to select. I, this will present an error. If the current sheet is not Kanban, it will create an error. When we select, we cannot select a cell in a sheet that is not currently active so we want to make sure that the current sheet is Kanban and if it is then select it. all we're gonna do is just gonna select F3 that's gonna allow the user to enter the task name first so the next macro we have is gonna load that when I select it basically when I put a specific task ID in here I want to be able to load that task so when I run that macro first thing we want to do is make sure that B8 is not empty B8 is going to be the task row if we don't have a task row a row that's associated we cannot load that task so when I run this macro we can do just that it's going to load all those task details in here I just ran that macro and basically what we're going to do is we're going to go through data mapping we're going to go through all not the test we're going to start out here because we've already got the task ID here the task ID is all already located in b7 so we're going to start out on column two starting out here going all the way to equals column 11 right all the way to 11 we're going to take all everything that's in that task row we've already associated that task row because we know the task row is located in b8 we can assign that to a variable we can then take all the information and put put site design inside f3 put the project id inside b3 we can put the inside h3 and do that so on and so forth so we can do all of that very easily actually we don't want to put it in b3 and we don't want to put it in b5 so i'll make some adjustments for that why don't we want to put number one in b3 because we have a formula here we don't want that so on column if we equals column right i need to make that adjustment column three right and column six we do not want to add those in right because that's automatically done through a formula so three and six we do not want so we're going to make that adjustment so how do we do that so if here task column does not equal three and task column does not equal six then do that right so that way we can have that so we want to make sure that it's not an equal three and it does not equal six then what we can do is take all that information and add it to our tasks right so that's going to load up so we're going to take it all the way from our tasks and bring it into our kanban sheet and inside those cells and that's going to ensure that we do not overwrite those formulas for our member id here okay so the we is going to loop through that so that's going to load all that information from our the row here and gonna bring it all in here. So notice when we run that now, it's not gonna over. So we run that, just go ahead and run that and we make sure that it doesn't overwrite those formulas, right? We don't wanna change what's in B3. We don't wanna change what's in B5. It's a one way. In other words, we wanna bring it from here into our database but we don't want to bring it from our database from back into that we don't want to erase these formulas here okay great so we've got that covered so that's how to load it but when we save or update what i want to do is i want to make sure this is a cool trick i've got six different fields one two three four five six different fields that are required here so i don't want to say if this is blank if this is blank if this you know so what i'm saying i don't want to put so many if thens if they're all checking each one so what's a great way to do that i want to check to see if six different fields are right. so when i click new task i want to make sure that and if i click here so what i want to do is i want to count those fields and i can do that right here so required if we look at this i'm going to use a formula in b11 called count a i want to 
count the number of texts F3, H3, J3, F5, H5, and J5 using count A. If that number is six, I know we're good to go. So notice it's zero, but as soon as I start filling in those fields, that's going to change. If I put in a category, if I put in a design, and if I put in a member, now we only have three blank fields. So notice it's three. So as we add in a task name, as we add in a project, so it's going to change. Notice that number, now the, it's changing here. So we can see that we've given it a priority, and now we have all six filled in so we're gonna use b11 so if b11 is anything other than six then i know that they have not filled in the required field so we're gonna use count a for that so that's a great shortcut inside vba to do that so we can say if b11 does not equal six then we know please make sure to fill in all required fields we're gonna exit the sub we don't want to move forward unless they filled in all those required fields all right so what we want to do is now i need to determine if the task is new or if it's an existing we're gonna use the same macro save task is this same macro that we're going to be using whether it is a new or an existing task so how do we know that well it's going to be based on what is in b8 if i delete this when we, when we click add new here's the new button right here it's going to clear out whatever's in b7 if b7 is cleared this formula based on b7 is going to go blank i notice that there's no row associated with this task if b8 is blank then we know it is a new task in that case we must assign it a new row it's going to be row 27 it's going to be task id 24. that new row is going to come in from the first available ones and we know that we have a next task id is four so those are the things that we're going to do if it is a new task so if it b80 is empty then we know it's a new task so i'm going to type in new task here and then what we're going to do is we're going to say the task row is going to be the first available we're going to say the next task id is going to be based on b nine so whatever's in b9 that's our nest going to put that in b7 you're going to take basically whatever's located right here inside b9 and place it directly inside b7 i'm also going to take whatever's in here and i'm going to place it directly in the first column located in a27 so we're going to do that in those those two lines of code so here we're going to take that next task id put it in b7 i'm also going to take it in that row that we've just created here and i'm going to put that nest task id these are the three items that we do if it's a new task if it is an existing task we need to do just one thing and that's basically take whatever's in b8 that task row that's existing task row and assign it to a variable so we can do that just right here inside task row so then everything else regardless from is going to be automatically if it is a new task or if it's an existing task we're going to do both of that so then we're going to run our loop our data mapping basically we're going to take whatever cell is in row one and we're going to place it so again looking in here we're going to look to row one whatever is in f3 inside here f3 and we're going to place it directly inside here place it directly on the row and we're going to do that from all the way from 2 to 11 I'm going to place that data in here that's going to create it and then we just want a then what i want to do is i want to run a macro that macro we have not created yet it's going to refresh that board that single macro is going to refresh and show all those cards and card tasks down here that macro will do that and then what that macro will be creating together and then also what i want to do is i just want a message box saying the task has been saved deleting the task we want to make sure that there's a row in b8 we're going to give them the option to make sure that they want to delete that task if they have we're going to set that task row inside a variable we're going to set that task id inside a variable and then what we're going to do is we're going to delete that and what i want to do is to refresh the board and then task new create a new task probably don't need to assign this okay and then task display what do i want to do task display in that case i'm going to go over that a little bit later on but basically what i want to do in that case when i select on a specific task here i want to display that task here so in other words you saw me if i click this button here i want to display that inside there so that macro is going to take care of that and so that's all we want to do there so we're going to run macros called task show this is the task i want to make sure that we're going to unhide it we're going to have the ability to hide it right i don't maybe i don't want to show it i only want to show the board so when i select on a specific task i want to unhide those rows unhide that which is basically going to be unhide this and then i want to display that so task show we're going to if it's hidden we're going to shoot and then what we want to do is visible so if i run this macro all we're going to be doing is unhiding and if they're hidden we're going to unhide them using this column and then what i want to do is i want to show a specific group a group of shapes what group of shape that that's this group of shape right here this group if we take a look at this group and that's going to include the save task the delete task 
the hide task. That specific group of buttons is called task group. I only want to show that if we're showing a task, otherwise I want it to be hidden. So that's how we're going to do that inside that macro. And then also we want to do is hide task. I want to have a macro that's going to hide it. So when I click here, it's going to hide those rows and we're also going to hide this task group. So when we hide it, so notice that we've done that. It is that macro that we have signed to that button. So when I click show button, you take a look, now we have a button called hide task. This button has been assigned a macro. If we take a look, it's called task hide. That is the same one that's right here. So when I hide it, basically all we're going to be doing is making those rows three rows three through ten are hidden and we're going to hide that task group that shape group of those three buttons so that's going to hide it okay great so now that we've got that that is pretty much it for all of the macros on the task we're going to focus again put most of our attention on these macros here kanban macros so the first thing what i want to do is i want to create a few buttons i want to create team so that I can filter out. I want to create a set of buttons. You saw it in the sample where I'm creating buttons here, these tabs for every single member that exists. So we can do that with a sample. So what I've done is I created a sample shape. This is basically a two sided rectangle, two round sided rectangle. And then all I've got is a circle in here and just some text in here. And I've created a group on that. Again, three components of this. Basically all we have is actually two components. We just have this rectangle here with two round sides and we've got a circle in here. I've given the circle name called member pick, mem pick, okay? I've given this tab, this tab shape uh, called member tab. And the entire group, those two shapes within the group, I've given it called sample member group. So what I wanna do is when I click this button refresh, for every single active member, for every active member here, notice we have four active members, one is inactive. I'm gonna run an advanced filter. I only wanna know those members that are active. I wanna create the results right here. Then what I wanna do for every single member here, I wanna create a tab and I wanna use create inside that, I wanna create their pictures. So I wanna take this picture that we have inside our file and I wanna put that inside this picture here based on that name and I wanna create that picture inside this particular circle. So I wanna create the background. How would we do that? Well, if we take a look at this, you, we can do it inside here. All we need to do is select it. If we're gonna do it through just, all we would need to do is do the shape fill and we can shape fill based on a picture. So if I wanna add that picture in here, all I would do is just select on a picture and I would do it just like that. But we wanna do it through VBA, right? So that's how we do it through manually. But how do we do it inside VBA? If you wanna clear that picture out, all we need is click on format shape fill and then no fill so what I want to do is I want to do it through VBA so we're going to do that so what I'm going to do inside VBA is I'm going to duplicate this sample then I'm going to give it a name a specific name and I want it to appear all the way along here for every member so we're going to do that that is the macro that we're going to write right now okay so how are we going to do that well inside the VBA we're going to go here and what I want to do is called member refresh now I've created some variables that are going to help us and we'll go through those variables as they come up inside the code but they've all been defined it's going to save us a little bit of time on writing these macros okay so first thing we want to do is anytime you refresh shapes what I want to do is I want to delete all the existing I want to delete not this all button it's not associated but what I want to do is I want to delete all the existing shapes so if we call them a specific name, we give them a name, a distinct name. We wanna make sure that it's not the same name, not the same characteristics as our sample. We don't wanna delete our sample. So we're gonna do just that. I'm gonna make sure that they all have a name. So we're gonna deal directly with the Kanban sheet. So Kanban. And to make sure that we have the right sheet, I'm gonna put the dot here and make sure that the IntelliSense comes up to make sure that we have that. Then I'm gonna tab over and I wanna do for each. Now I've member shape now i've defined member shape and right up here as a shape right here so member shape we've already defined it as for each member shape in dot shape so that's going to be inside that so we're going to do something i want to close our loop next member shape so inside here we want to do something what do i want to do i want to check to see if for every single shape on that sheet every single shape i want to check if it includes the name member, I want to give it a unique name. When I create those, we're going to give it, it's going to include the word member. So for every shape that has the word member in it, notice our sample doesn't have the full word member. Our sample has M-E-M-B, right? M-E-M-B. So if we take a look at our sample, M-E-M-B, and our picture has M-E-M-B, but I want to create the full name member. So for every shape that includes the word member, I want to delete it. So how do we do that? If in string first we need to check for that i'm going to check the member shape 
dot name. So I want to check that name. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the word member. If it exists, does not equal zero, that means it exists, then what I want to do, I want to delete it. Member shape dot delete. Okay, so that's very simple. Now we're gonna, that deletes every single shape on the sheet that includes the text member. Now make sure that no other shapes other than the ones we're about to create. So now that's it, that's pretty much it. That I'm gonna focus again on for now our members sheet so we're going to do end with now i want to focus on our member sheet because it is this sheet here that i want to run our advanced filter i'm going to run it i want to determine the last row here using a then what i want to do is i want to run advanced filter I have our criteria i only want to have tabs for those members who are active so notice this one status inactive so only those with active I want to have those results come here then I want to loop through those results starting with three in the last results row and create a tab for each one of those so we're gonna focus on our members sheet this sheet is called members notice we have members sheet located right here members so with members again using the dot to make sure we have the name right then what we're going to do is we're going to determine the last row what is the last row well, we're going to use that i'm going to write that up real quick here and that that's going to be basically equals the last row so i used auto hotkey to automate that notice is real quick so last row dot range a that's going to be the last row of our members then what i want to do is i want to make sure it's not less than three if it is that means we have no data so we're going to do if the last row less than three then we know to exit the sub the last row is less than three then exiting the sub okay assuming that it's not we can run our advanced filter again i'm going to use auto hotkey that helps make things a little bit faster that's a free software auto hotkey okay so what are we going to do and i need to update this advanced filter it's going to be based on a2 through e in the last row so that's the first part we want to do so let's bring this down so we can see both the data the data and the table and we can also see the code so i'm going to bring this down here and we can see both okay so it's going to start at a2 all the way through e going to use e in the last row make sure our variable here is the same as this and the last is will be last not result row so this is the last row so and then we're going to run our advanced filter based on criteria what is the criteria It's going to be located in j2 so we're going to update this to j2 through j3 that's our criteria and what do we want those results to go i want those results to go through l2 through o2 so we just need to update this from l2 through o2 now i want the last results row now we can now we can automate so what is the last results row so we're going to determine that based on l so that's going to be the last results row is going to be equal to in this case L, we're going to use L, that's our required field here, which is going to be our member ID. It's going to get us the last row. If the last results row is less than three, then exit the sub. Okay, so assuming that we ha actually have data, what we want to do that is run a loop. So now I'm ready to run the loop. So, but I want to set first thing, what I want to do is I want to set a left position. I want to determine what the first left position is. I want to keep track of it. If I move from one to the other, the other I need to increase the left position so that they don't overlap all in the same. So notice if we take a look at this, it's called all member shapes. So what I want to do is I want to have our first position of that tab to appear just to the right of this. So what I need to know is I need to know the left position of this shape. And I also need to know the width of this shape because the width of this shape plus the left position of it is going to be the right of that. So we can do that here. So I want to set that the left position that's gonna i already have that as double variable right here so the left position is going to be equal to kanban equal to we need to call it the shape kanban that's our our sheet there and what is that that's going to be the dot shapes i want to focus on again that all member notice the member shape making sure that we have that all member shape I want to know what the left position of that is. I also want to know what the width is. So it's going to be equal to, in this case, dot left position of that. Plus, I want to know what the width is. So plus, I want to know the width of this. So I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to paste it next. And this time, it's going to be plus the width. And I'm also going to add a little spacer. So I also want plus one. So I don't want them right next to each other. So that's our starting left position as we add tabs members this left position is going to be increased so that's going to be the first place so now we've got the initial left position now we're ready to run our loop again our loop is going to be from inside our members here from three to the last member row so we can do that here so for the result row equals three to the last to last result row closing our loop next 
result row. So this is what we want to work in. I want to work in this loop. I want to create a brand new tab for each of the members in that list. Okay, so first thing what I want to do is I want to determine the member ID. So the member ID, also I have a variable on that, is going to be equal to dot range. It's going to be based on L and the result row. And the result row. That is going to be our member ID. Member ID. So once we have that member ID, because that's I also want to know the member name. So what is the member name? So the member M-E-M-B, member name, I've got that also in a variable as a text right here, member name right here, making sure that we have the right one here, just to make sure I'm going to copy and paste that, equals, what's going to, that's going to be located inside M, so all I need to do is just copy this here, and then update the column, in this case, M, so that's going to be our member name, so we've got our member name and our member ID so far, so we need that, I also want to know what the member picture is, so the member picture that's also a string variable is going to be equal to in this case what's located in o so let's put in our equals change this to o and we have our member picture member picture right because we want to place that picture and so now that we have that i also want to know what the picture file i want to know i this is only the name but i want the long file name so that i can pull in that picture so what is that going to be it's going to be equal to basically whatever is in here whatever is located in admin d3 adding the backslash and then adding the name so we can put that into a string variable here so let's do just that right now so inside this we're gonna we've got a brand new one also another string variable located here called picture file this is going to be the entire file name of that picture so i'm going to paste that in here it's going to be equal to admin right that's going to be the starting range what is that located d3 range d three dot values and right and I want to add that backslash onto it so that's very important and the backslash here and what else and I also want to know the member picture that's going to complete that full file name member picture okay full file path of the member picture great so now we have that now we have all the components we need to build out our tab. So next thing what I want to do inside our Kanban is basically I want to take this sample and I'm going to duplicate it. Then I'm going to give it a brand new name and we're going to assign it. So that's just what we're going to do now inside the code. So Kanban.shapes, we're calling out that sample member group. That's the one I want to duplicate. Dot duplicate. Then what we want to do is assign a name to it. We've just duplicated with that. Now I'm going to give it a specific name so that we can refer to that. It's going to equal member. Remember, that's the full name. Remember, now I want to do member and what else? I want something unique, unique, which is the member ID. So the member ID. Once we do that, that's going to duplicate it. Now what we do is I want to work with that. So now I'm going to copy this. So now we're going to focus just on that. So with, again, kanban.shapes. Which shape are we working with? That one we just created. Now I want to do a bunch of things with that. So what do I want to do with that? So we've got that. Let's remove the double quotes. We don't need that there. Okay, so what do we want to do with that? Well, I want to do a bunch of things first. So individually, notice that this is a group, but I want to work with the individual items within the group. I want to put their name on this member tab. I want to put their picture here. So I want to work with the individual items inside that group which can be a little bit tricky but it's not after i go over it with you so we're gonna this is the member tab shape now we're gonna focus on that so we want to work with the individual items so how do we do that with inside that dot group items we're gonna focus on just the group items i'm gonna focus on one called the member tab member tab and what do i want to do with that well i want to give it a text right what is the text Frame. I want to give it the text. What are we going to add? I want their member name. Dot text range. Dot text. That's going to do is give it the name. What do I want to do? It's going to be equal to the member name. That's the name that I've just assigned there. So we've done that, but I also want to auto size it. Some members might have a long name. Some members might have a short name. So we want to make it automatically so that it sizes its width automatically. So to do that, we can use what's called text frame, and then we're going to use auto size. So dot auto size auto size it's got auto size but that's going to auto size the height and the width so we do need to make sure that we reset the height which may be necessary auto size equals true so it's going to automatically size it now what we want to do is i want to set dot height i want to reset the height just to make sure that the height is is automatically doesn't get resized as well we only want to auto size the width but not the height so the height is going to be equal to i want to make sure that's going to be based on that sample equals to kanban 
dot shapes dot sample member group dot height so we're gonna, we want to use we want to match the height of that sample again just to make sure that it's set okay and then I want to assign a name dot name I want to assign it's right now the name is called member tab but I want to rename it because I want to name it unique based on that specific member to do that I'm just gonna add the member ID so the dot name is gonna be equal to member tab and the member ID so we're renaming it based on adding the member ID onto that okay so that is it with the group items that's with this member so we've done that that's all we've done with this tab here we've given it a name instead of we're going to add member name and the ID and we've also added the text we've added their name as a text now we're going to focus on the member picture right so let's do that inside the code so we've done that with the member tab shape here and now what we want to do is I want to focus on the member picture so member picture so what do we want to do with that with dot group items back into the group items this time we're going to focus on the member picture so member picture so inside that picture I want to do some things with that make sure that we have the end group so what do I want to do I want to add in that user picture that's the first thing so dot fill I'm gonna fill it with what fill it with a picture fill it with the user picture and what is that picture that picture is going to be located we've already created it it's in the picture file right we've already done it here what is it here we've already defined it right here picture file make sure we get that variable right picture file right here so that's going to add picture file as a fill background fill background okay so once we've done that all i want to do is just give again give it a name just like this i'm going to copy this and give it the same name so that we have a number but this time i want to i want the member picture so change this to member picture giving it a unique name and that's going to be important because what i want to do is when they click on it i need to make sure it's unique so that we can basically i want to set the filter based on the id so this id is going to come very very handy when we click on it good so we've got that there and also so we've got group items so now what we want to do is i want to add an and on action we could do that to make sure that we actually add a macro to that tab so we can do that with this dot so now we're outside we're outside of this meta picture but we're still inside this shapes group right so i want to add to this entire group here i want to add a macro so we can do that with on action and what is that macro that we're going to say is going to equal the member filter so that's the macro that we're going to write soon called member filter so we want to filter the members based on that so when we click on that that's the macro they're going to write. macro to run to filter by member so we are already have that now what i want to do is i want to set the position of it what is the top position of that tab the top position of it is going to be equal to kanban notice we have to call it the sheet dot range a 13 dot top we can use any column but i want to make sure a 13 dot top why are we using a 13 because 13 is going to be right here so i want to use the top position of this but i want to go a little bit higher so to go higher what we need to do is subtract so minus so the minus the height dot height of that group height minus two so what's going to going to set that top position higher right we want it higher than the top position of this higher by the height and then subtract two that's going to set that top position right now all we need to do is set the left position so that sets the height put set tab height and next i want to set the left position dot left is going to be equal to we've already put that inside a variable left position here remember that was the first thing we did here the left position is here so we've already set that up but now we just need to increase the left position set left position so that's that but we want to get ready for the next tab right the next tab we also need to increase the left position so how do we do that so i also want to make sure it's visible dot visible in case it's not should be when we duplicate it should be automatically visible but just in case making sure that that tab is visible now what we want to do is we want to update we want to get ready for the next tab but we need to update that left position so the left position is going to be equal to dot left the left position of the current tab dot left plus the width of the current right width plus one so what does that mean that means as i create these individual tabs i want to 
I want to know what the left position of that tab is plus the width of that tab plus one so that we increase the left position, keep moving it over and over. Okay, good. So we have that. So we have the left position plus one and width. This is the end width of that entire group, that entire tab. And then the next result, we have one too many end widths here, I believe. So I'll check on that. Next row, and this is the end width of the sheet. So this is the end width of the group. This is the end width of the sheet here that we're focused on. That was the sheet that our member sheet so good so we have with the group items here member picture here with the group items and ends with the member tab with the overall group here and then we have with the sheet up here with the member sheet up here so that looks good i'm saving our work okay so what we want to do is basically take this here and i've already done it member refresh create that button which we've done here and this is the button here so we're going to test it out this right here refresh and let's def member mem and and B when I did the B there okay go through this and then fix this area here all member shape here that's gonna be there and make sure we get those names right and then fix this also here too all right let's take a look at that and fill that okay running the macro again all right let's take a okay I like that that looks pretty good there we've got everything's pretty much set up we've got our macro here all macro everything looks very good we've created the tabs based on that looking good so we've got our tabs now so when we click refresh it's automatically in refresh notice that happens that's the macro we've just assigned so now that we have this refresh team macro we can move in to another macro this time i want to refresh i want to get create those cards here so now what i want to do is i want to create a brand new one called kanban refresh and this macro is going to create all the cards that fill in this so basically what i want to do is i've got another sample here in this particular macro what i want to do is i want to take this sample sample card i want to actually create a different i'll put the details in here i want to put inside this card i want to put the task name i want to add the task name i want to add the project name i want to put in the member again the member name and i want to put in that member picture here again i've got a circle here i want to put in that member picture inside here card member picture and i also want to when i click i want to put the member name inside this shape we've got another one another group called card member name this field here is just a text box and we've given it called card member name i've wrapped i also want to put this forward this particular macro here i want to push this forward using the move card button that's going to allow us to on a single click move it forward in the progress of our kanban and also i want to be able to click on this icon here and have that information show up to show the detailed task items to be able to edit or update that so that's all that's just within a group so we've got four different shapes inside a group right here so we're going to create a sample group that's called the sample card so i want to again duplicate this and then fill in all the information and then place it directly on the board wherever it's good based on that so let's write that macro right now it's called kanban refresh so to do that we're, we've already defined our variables to help move things along and also we're going to focus this time we're going to focus on our kanban but I, what i want to do again is i want to delete all of the shapes called task card in other words every time i create duplicate this i want to give it a name called task card task card this one's called sample card so each one i want to the, the first thing we want to do is refresh is delete just like we did in the members i want to delete all of the cards accordingly so to clear out all the existing cards so to do that we can do again four you can run a four each one so do it something like this four each task shape and i've got again task shapes here located in here inside our shapes called task shape that is a shape so for each task shape in kanban calling out the sheet dot shapes closing our loop so next task shape so inside here what i want to do again if just like we did here in string this time we're looking for the task shape of a name what is the name we're looking for called task card that is the name that we are going to assign of course plus the task id so if it is greater than zero or does not equal zero here then i want to do task shape dot delete just deleting that so all we're going to do is run that so it's going to delete all those 
Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to reset the top position. So resetting the top position. So how do we do that? So I want to clear out. So I've got a top position. As we move along down here, I want to know what the top position of the last one is because I don't want them to overlap unless we have clicked expand all. So what I want to do is I want to set the top position of each one. So as we move the cards down, we create a, what's called the top position. I want to know the top position so that they're not overlapping. I want to put that top position somewhere. And I'm going to put them all the way down here, all the way in uh, row 100. That's going to be that. So what I want to do is I want to reset these top positions all the way to a single place. So what do I want the first top position? It's going to be based on whatever the top position is. I want it to appear on E14. So whatever the top position of this E14 is, I want to put that. And I want to put that top position here. So as we add cards, this top position changes. It increases. Notice that they're all different. So the first thing I want to do is reset inside row 100 from E through J, setting that. So we're going to write that into the code right now. So Kanban dot range E100, E100, all the way through J100, dot value is going to be equal to Kanban dot range i'm going to set the top position based on whatever the top position of e14 is dot top that's going to set it that sets initial top position for each card call it card or card tasks either one are good okay so we've done that now we're going to but i'm primarily going to focus right now on our tasks what I want to do is I want to loop through all of these tasks right here. Everything that we've created here, I want to create an advanced filter. And then I want to loop through, of course, actually the results. So what I want to do is I want to set a filter up. Again, advanced filter. We're going to have some criteria because we're going to be eventually creating a criteria through all of these right sometimes we only want a specific project if i've clicked here on a project i only want a simp a single project or maybe i only want to show certain priorities or maybe i only want to show certain categories or maybe i only want to show it based on a current date on a specific date to do that we need to create criteria and another advanced filter so we've got a list of criteria here inside our project id i'll place if i've selected a project id i'm going to place that project id what about a priority i've got a formula here that's going to help us determine so we can be based on whatever's in f11 so in our criteria here inside our contract whatever is in f11 if f 11s show all then i just want to blank right we're not we're going to show all of them otherwise if it's a priority here we want to show whatever priority that is so i want to show urgent so how do we do that if Kanban board F11 equals show all, then just blank, right? We're going to show everyone. Otherwise, whatever is in F11 show. Also, a member ID. I may want to put a member ID or a category here. Let's color that the way we've colored everything else because it's a formula. And I want to distinguish between what's in a formula. Sometimes we can do that. So what I want to do is a category. Same thing. We're going to do category. Category is based on H11. If H11 equals all categories then show blank otherwise show whatever's in h11 and that way when we set a category like such as design here we go and i want design to show up notice it's automatically based on there and also the same thing with dates now remember when using dates it's much better to use a number just like we have each number is associated with the date so again i want less than or equal we can actually it should probably be greater than equal greater than I only want to show dates on or after, not great, not less than, because we only want to show dates greater than equal to certain dates. So if I have August 1st, let's change this to August 1st, because most of our dates are above that. I only want to show cards above a certain date, beyond a certain date. We don't want to show the older cards, right, because they're there in the past. We only want to show, so I want to create a filter based on this. This is the criteria. So all the way from P2 through 3 is a criteria. Then what I want to, based on whatever criteria has been set, I want those results to come right here. Inside those results, we're going to loop through those results. We're going to determine the last row, and we're going to loop through all those results, all the way from three to last row, creating a card for each one of those, and placing that card based on the column, basing, coloring it based on the colors associated here, placing it based on the stage, right? If it's to do, right, we know it's going to be placed right here in column F. If it is in progress, such as this one, we know we're going to be placing it here in column G. So that's what we're going to do, but we're going to do that inside the code. So we're going to fo focus primarily on the tasks. So that's what we're going to do. So with tasks, that's the sheet that we're going to focus on. Then what I want to do is I want to determine the last task row. And that's going to be equal to the last based on A. So that's going to get us our last task row. If the last task row is less than, in this case, 
before then exit the sub and we need to make sure that there's data again we're going to run that advanced filter okay so we're going to run that advanced filter and i'm going to automate that and let's take a look inside that but that's going to be based on all the way from a3 all the way through k in the last row so we're going to update that a3 and we want last task row in this case last task row a3 all the way through a3 all the way through in this case k so we're going to change that to k now what about our criteria our criteria is going to be based on let's drop this down here and then bring this over here our criteria is going to be based on p2 all the way through u3 p2 through u3 so we need to update that advanced filter criteria p2 all the way through u3 then what we want the results to come in i want those results to come in through a a and then through a k i believe let's take a look at that all the way through a a through a k that's correct a through a k so that's where our results are going to come now what we need to do is determine the last row of those results and so the last row of those results is going to be equal to let's go one more line down this one right here the last row is going to be based on AA and the last results row. This is going to be our last results row. And with our last results row are less than three, then exit the sub. Nothing we can do if we don't have any results. Assuming that we do have results, we can. what I want to do is I want to then sort. This is going to be really cool. Sorting based on priorities. So here, we've done paths. We've done sorting based on dates. But I want to show all the urgent first and I want to show, so this is the sort. I want to show all the urgent first, then the high, then the normal, then the no. So what I want to do is I want to do a custom sort, sorting based on these. So how do we do that? Well, let's say if we we're going to just do a custom sort here, let's paste the values down here. And let's just do, let's do, put in low down here and put in, let's say high down here and put in something like, uh, let's do normal down here. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to create a sort, let's say based on this. So if we click in here, and we go in to sort what I want to do is I want to do a custom sort and I want to base it based on this so based on what based on the values and I want to base it on an order a specific order a custom order a custom list so what I've done is created a custom list and I've given it that list urgent high normal and low so this is the same way all you need to do is just type in here the values in the next line so if I know we've given it called a custom sort based on urgent high normal then low based on this specific order when we click sort it's going to automatically sort it based on that so we're going to do the same thing notice they're all now sorted based on that custom sort so i'm going to do the same thing but inside vba sorting all of those results here all based on the excuse me, based on this priority here urgent normal load notice how they're all assigned so we want to do that based on that so i'm going to create a sort from a3 all the way through AK in the last row based on AE3 and based on all the that custom sort. So how do we write that up in VBA? So we can do that based on here. So we're going to first go with sort. And then what I want to do is I want to do dot sort, dot, dot, dot sort. We focused on the sheet dot sort. Notice IntelliSense didn't come up. So now when we dot sort, sort fields, I want to clear the sort fields. That's the first thing we want to do, clear any previous sorts. So now what we want to do is we want to add a key, dot sort fields. And then what we want to do is dot add and then a key. So we want to add that key. What is that key going to be? That key is going to be equal to tasks dot range AE3. That's the one I was just telling you, AE3. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to sort on, it's going to equal XL sort on values. We're sorting on the values, sort on values. Next up, what I want to do is I want to do a custom order. So it's going to be the custom order. We're looking for custom order. Notice that's an option there, custom order. And what is that custom order? It's going to be equal to, we just need to set it now. Again, here, what is it? It's going to be urgent. Make sure you spell those right. Urgent. Then it's going to be high. Then it's going to be normal. Then it's going to be low. So that's our custom order. And then also I want a data option on that. Data option is going to be equal to sort normal xl sort normal so now what we want to do is we want to set the range so now we want to set the range okay let's take a look at that sort on sort on the values custom order urgent high normal and low the data option sort normal once we do that we want to set the range so what is that range going to be dot set range the range is going to be equal to tasks make sure we call out that sheet dot range aa3 a3 
through all the way a k and the last result row so that's our and then all we need to do is dot apply we just need to apply that sort and that's it so that's going to sort based on that so we can close that out clear out the spaces and now we have our sort ready okay so we've got our and everything sort now we're ready to loop through that and add our cards so how do we do that so we're going to run that loop for result row is going to be equal to three to the last result row and then all we need to do is then close our loop next result row so once our loop is closed we're ready to move on okay so what i want to do is now we want to get a lot of variables and put information into the variable about that task so we're gonna let's put it get task variables and bring this up a little bit here okay so some of those variables here are going to be the task id task id already into a string variable here is going to be equal to dot range i want a a all right that's going to come from and the result row and the result row that's going to be our task id task id okay so what we want to do is just copy that and then next up i want to know the task name so put in the task name also a string variable and that's going to be located in a b it's going to be our task name and then also what i want to know is i want to know the project name so project name also another variable and the project name is going to be located in ad ad is coming from ad that's going to be the project name and i also want to know the task priority task priority also set as a string variable already priority and then also if you're never sure you know you got the spelling right put it in lowercase like this priority i use upper and lowercase and if it changes we know we've got that the right variable correct okay so what that's going to be that's going to be located inside a e column a e is going to take on our task priority so we need to know the priority because that's going to set our color of the task priority okay so once we have the task priority i also want to know the member id member id and that's going to be located f so we've got f and that's going to be the member id member id very important because we need to pull the picture and we also need to pull the member name so we're going to need that information and also i want to know the category category i got to know which column to put it in so the category very very important task category and that's located in ah category is going to be not the, the stage is going to for the column not the category category we need to filter by it i want to put the category inside the text inside the card i want to know what category it is is it development meeting release or whatever the categories you decided so now we want the task task stage this is going to determine what column it is task stage is going to be located in ai this will determine what column we place it in this is the task stage what stage is it on okay once we have all that what well, now i've got all that all right i've got all the information that's important i'm going to save our work here and now what we want to do is i want to know if we found the priority i want to know what the priority is i've got a list of priorities located here inside a named range called priority what i want to do is i want to find it so i know what color to add to it so i want to know what color to add so how do we know what color so first thing what i want to do is i want to determine to make sure it's found in the list so i've got some named ranges here under the name so found member we're going to look up the member found priority as a range found the stage and found the task so those are all ranges that we're going to work with inside this macro probably the next one so first thing we want to do is set the found priority is going to be equal to i'm going to do a dot just to make sure that we've got the names equals to just to make sure the intellisense came up admin right that's where our range is located dot range and then this is priority that is the named range that we've created and so what i want to do is i want to look within that range find using the find and what do i want to look up i want to look up the task priority that's the one we just assigned inside that variable i want to find that and what i want to do is i want to look in excel values and i also want to look in excel whole so i want to look for that and see if it's found that's going to set that's going to help us set the task color so we want to find that task so we know what color if i want to know what i have signed these numbers so i want to get the task number what are these numbers here well inside excel if we add a specific task color so when i click on let's take a look at view here 
under the home we have a bunch of colors so notice each range is associated to a color actually so inside vba assigns it a color based on the theme so it's like theme color 26 27 and i'll show you a little bit more about that but basically it's a sign if you run a macro and you add a color it's going to do that automatically how do we know that well let's do that let's just run a little bit of a test so we know exactly how we got that so i'm going to insert a shape here any shape would be fine and there's a shape. So now what I want to do is I want to run a macro here. We'll call it macro one. And I'm going to format it based on a color. So I'm going to get, let's just say we give it this orange color here. I'm going to stop that macro now. Now we're going to go back into VBA. We're going to take a look at this, this module here. Notice it says MSO shape style preset 25. We know the color associated with that is 25. Everything else is the same. So if I know what specific shape style preset a sun 25 is yellow then i know so i just need to run that macro each time i change a color and we know what number to associate it with that then all we need to do is apply that number inside vba to automatically set a color so that's all we need to do on that relatively simple so that's all we need it's just a very easy way i'm going to delete this module right now we don't need it so we're going to remove the module we don't need to save that so what i did is i basically ran that macro and then just assigned a number for each one so if i pull that number out i know which color associated with that is so that's all we need to do so what i want to do is i want to look for this find it then inside column g and the found row we can then put it in there so that's all we need to do there so let's go inside vba and set that up so first thing we need to do is look for it and make sure we found it so now we need to check if not found priority is nothing then it's been found right so we know it's been found then what we want to do is a few things is nothing then what we want to do is we want to set the shape style actually we don't need the end if we can do it all in a single line of code that's fine too i want to set a variable that variable is a string variable we're going to call that shape style i need to go up didn't need to go up here but i've created a, a shape style as a string right here so it is this shape style that we're going to use that we're going to set that based on that so we don't need the end if because i'll do it all in one line then the shape style is going to be equal to admin dot range g column g and the found priority dot row if this doesn't come up we know we've got something wrong with the variable so dot row dot value what is in that dot value that's going to set up that's the shape style here so we can do that else just in case so we know the shape style is going to be let's say 25 24 giving it a name else what if it's not found else then in that case i want to set it as a default shape style is going to be equal to let's just say g6 and we'll put that default let's put a default i'll put the this default 25 here adding this so that way we have it 25 just going to put it just in case it's not found we set a default color there so let's do g6 shape style is going to be equal to let's do admin dot range g6 setting a default just in case it's not found in case we didn't find the color g6 dot value setting that okay so now that we have that in there and that's going to set the shape style color set shape style color okay good now that that then we can then move on now what we want to do is i want to look for the members right i want to find the member we've got the member id here now i want to make sure that we find the member i want to pull their name and i want to pull the picture so again inside our members i want to look for that we've got our named range here called member id once it's found i want to get their name in case it changes i want to keep whatever's here and i also want to pull their picture up so i need to know that to do that so again let's do that we're going to again set in this case found member already defined as a range is going to be equal to members focus on the members sheet dot dot range using that named range id member id is the named range where those member id are located going to dot find in this case dot find as well and this time we're looking for we're going to look for that member id already inside a variable then comma i want to do again excel values excel whole want to do whole right here so now that we've determined that we're going to set that found member id based on the values based on the whole looking for that member again if not found remember the not and the nothing cancel each other out it means it's been found if not found member is nothing then it's been found right then okay this one we can do and if because there's a few things we need to do on this so i need to pull the member picture i need to pull the member name so that way we're going to use an and if if not found members nothing these cancel each other out that means it's been found member found 
so now that we know the member's been found, what I want to do is I want to pull the member name. Member name is going to be equal to where? It's going to be based on the members dot range. Member name is located in column B and the found member row. Found member dot row. It's been found, so we know that that's the member name. Okay, I also want to get the member picture. Member picture is going to be equal to, again, same, nearly the same thing in this case, but of course it's a different column. In this case, the picture is located in column D, so we're going to set that to column D and update the node here called the member picture. I want to put that member picture inside that card in our special circle, so we're going to need both of those information. I also want to set the picture file just as we did up here. Remember, we had a picture file up here. Also, we want to know the full picture, so I can just copy that here. We already set it up here. And then I'm going to bring it down here, all the way down here. So the picture, I guess I could have done the entire the picture file is going to be equal to here, the admin D3, the member picture we've already defined. It's a full file, member, just as we did before. That's it. So I want to pull those three things, getting that information, setting it up. That's everything we've done, assuming that the member has been found. Next up, now what I want to do is I want to find the stage, right? Now I've got the member information, but now I need to know what column to put it on. If I know, I would need to look for it here, but I've already got the stages located right here. So I've got them called stages in the admin. I want to find out if it's in the number one position, I need to know to, I know to place it inside column five, column six, column seven. So I need to know where to place that card in which column. To do that, we need to locate it and see which one it's located on inside our stages. So we can do that with just a few lines of code here. So again, if we can, oh, let's set it first. Set the found stage is going to be equal to, again, admin, just as we did before, dot range, looking inside the stages. Stages here, that's the named range we've created here. Dot find, again, using find just as we did before. In this case, we're going to find what? We're looking for, we've already set it up here, the task stage. This is the variable. That's what we're looking for here. Find it. Where are we looking? Excel values. Again, I could just copy this here. We've already done it here a few times and then just paste it down here to make sure we get it right. So we're going to look for that. Now, again, if not found stage is nothing then it's been found right then we know it's been found so then okay we look for that but in case what if it's not found if it's not found we don't even know where to place it so we really should skip that right so we can, let's do this let's change it up a little bit if found stage is nothing then it means it's not found go to let's call this next task Right, because if it's not found, I don't, we don't know where to place it, so we should just skip it. So in this case, I'm going to put next task down here, and it's going to skip everything else. We're not going to place it if we can't find a place to locate it. So we don't need the end if here. Here we're going to skip it. So if it's not found, if found stage is nothing, go to next task, nothing else. So assuming that it is found, we can then continue on. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to assign a task column. I need to know what column to place that task on. Task column is going to be equal to the found stage dot row plus one. Why is that? Well, remember, I need to know if it's on backlog, I need to know to place it in column five. That should be, did I do minus one? This should be minus one, not plus one, right? Why is that? Because if I want to place it in, if it's found on row six, if it's found on row six here, I need to place it in column five. So we need to subtract one from wherever it's been found. So there we go. So minus one. So the task column, we've already set that. Now what I want to do is I need to know the top position. What is the top position that we're going to be placing that? So the top position is going to be equals whatever it's in E and the specific column. So we can do that. It is going to be equal to Kanban. Remember, we put it on row 100. That top position is going to keep track of it. Kanban, top position, dot cells because we're using a variable here in the column and the row. We want dot cells. We know it's row 100 in that case and the task column. That is what's going to keep track of our top position, dot value. Get top position. I'll show you that to you one more time so we can get top position. And as we increase, as we add cards, this top position is going to change. As we add a card, it's going to change. As we add a card, so we always know the top position. Good. So we've got that set up. So we're going to set that top position. All right. So what do we want to do now? Now what I want to do is I want it. We're ready. We've got everything ready. So I'm ready to create that card. We've got a sample shape here, just like we did in the members. I'm going to duplicate this and then we're going to make 
updates to the current one. So the first thing we want to do is take the sample card and we want to duplicate it. So let's do that right now. Kanban dot shapes that sample card dot duplicate. And the first thing we want to do is give it a name. So what is that name that we want to give it? Well, it's going to be going to be equal to the task card task card. Remember, everything's going to have it called task card because that's what we deleted up here. The first thing we did is we deleted all the task cards. So we want to give it the name of task card. But I want to add to that because I want to know what task is it, what specific task and task ID. So we're going to give it the word task card plus the task ID. That's going to have a unique name for each group. Task card with task ID. So notice that every time I type in with, it adds end with, which is automated. It's usually good, but sometimes a little bit annoying. So that's also auto hockey. So we've given it a name. Now we can work with it. Now we've given it, we've duplicated it. We've given it a unique name. Now I want to work with that specific group. So how do we do that? So I'm just going to copy this here, task card. So with Kanban dot shapes, putting in that shape, task card and task ID, we're going to work with that specific shape. So task ID. So now I, again, I want to work with the individual items. I really don't want to work with the group itself, right? I want to work with the individual items inside the group. I want to work with the card back. I want to work with this. So that's the first thing I want to do is work with the card back. So we're going to call with group items card back. So the first thing is setting that up. So let's do that with dot group items individual items inside that which one is the card back i want to change the color add some text and do a few things with that so that is it card back that's going to be called set back card details so inside that we're going to do some few things so the first thing what i want to do is i want to assign a color based on now i tried to use a dynamic variable it didn't really work and i'm going to show you this so we're going to use select case on this and i'll show you why select case and it's going to be based on the shape shape style we've already defined that shape style shape style so in this case case is equal to 24. so in that case i want to set the shape style so that with this card back i want to set a shape style dot in this case shape style is going to be equal to right 24 right so we just have to search down here for 24. now i tried to use this as a variable but it didn't work in other words to have a single line where we set it just it didn't work so we're going to use this select case as opposed to what i meant is that this as a text and this as a variable didn't work so we're going to use select case that's it great so if that's for 24 so now all we need to do is just duplicate that a little bit and we're going to do the same thing so in this case 25 let's take a look at what we have in here so we have 24 25 21 and 26 so that's just what we're going to do here 21 24 the next ones let's drop this down here so we have it we can see that 25 21 and 26 so 25 changes to 25 relatively easy a little more code than i would have preferred but it works good 21 is going to be the next one and then the last one's 26 21 the order doesn't necessarily matter 21 and then the last one is 26 here so if the shape style is 26 and then put then 26 otherwise it's going to stay the same it won't change so there we go so 21 24, 25, 26, and actually let's do, I think I wanted to change, I don't like blue on this one. I'm going to use green. I want to change the order around green and then blue. I think it's 22. I think I had it as my, my notes show 22, so I'm going to change that to 22. So 22, they're just different styles. You can mess with them, see which one you like. 22, I like better. 25, 24, 25, 21, and 22. And select. So that's it. So what that's going to do is going to change it based on the shape style, based on whatever shape style is it, based on this shape style, which is the number. So now we've set the background. So what else do we want to do with this group items? I want to set the tag. So the text inside that text frame two dot text range dot text. We're going to set it up. What do we want to do? Oh, I want to add the task name. It's going to be equal to the task name and what? And I want to add some more. I want to add VBCRL, a new line that's auto hockey that help automated that. I want to add also in the project name. I want to put in that project name here, project name here. And I also want to add in the category. So adding the category what is that category so i'm going to add in those three items task name and then a brand new line the project name and then another line the category so putting that all that information in now what i want to do is i also want to assign a unique name for this background so dot name is going to be equal to call it card back 
and the task ID. I want to make sure that everyone's got a unique ID, task ID. So that's going to assign a unique name for that. That is it for our back, right? That's it we just did. So with those three things, what did we do here? So let's just take a little bit of review. With this back here, first we assign the color, then we assign the text, and then we rechange the name from card back. We added the card back and the ID. So that's it. Now what I want to do is I want to focus on two other things. I want to work on this circle here, this one right here. I want to take that information here and I want to add to that. Okay, next up after that, what I want to do is I want to focus on this circle here, this one here, card member pick. That one there, hard to select there. Card member pick, you got to be right on the border there. Card member pick, I want to add the picture in there. Then this hidden one here, card member name, I want to add the name to that. So those are the what we're going to work with right now. So this one here, first thing what I want to do is I want to add dot group here. Let's go ahead and do that, dot group items. And which one are we going to focus on? The move card button. I want to add a task I did that. This is the move button. We also need to work on this. This move button here, when I move a task to another one, I need to know what task number. So we need to assign a specific task ID to this also, everything being unique. So we can do that. So group items here, move card button. We want to do something with that dot name giving it a brand new name is going to be equal to again move card button and the task id right so everything's unique giving it in let's call this the move move task button so we've got that also what i want to do is now that let's do the member picture so again dot group items that which group item we're going to focus on here? We're going to focus on this member picture, the one that's hard to select inside here. That one there, card member pick. So with this one, I want to fill it with the user picture, just as we did. So group items, pasting that in a card member pick. This one, dot, dot, fill. What am I going to fill it with? Fill it with the user picture, dot user picture. And that is going to be, of course, that picture file name that we've done right here. This picture file. That's the one we're going to got that full name right here. I'm going to place that right down in here. That's the picture file. Add user picture. Okay, so once we have that, we're ready to move on. Now what I want to do is I want to focus on the name. So again, dot group items. This is one. What are we going to focus on? This is the name field. This one right here, card member name. So I'm going to copy that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add that card member name dot text. I'm going to add the text. I want to add that name in there. So card member name it's going to be here dot text frame dot text range dot text equals the member name member name okay add member name okay good so we've got the member name there located in there that's going to take care of it now what i want to do is i want to do the view card button remember well, i almost got a button here this little button here right here when i click that i want to view the card above so that's called the view card button so we're going to focus on that what do i want to do with that I just basically want to rename it based on the id so again dot group items because we're focused on it, that individual view card button dot name i want to rename it. it's going to have the same macros so associated with it but we're going to rename it so view card button is going to be equal to view card button and the task id so everything gets that task id so we know so we can differentiate between them view card button with task id shouldn't use the word with otherwise it's going to automatically end with okay so we've got the group item we've added all that okay so now we've done everything we're ready to set the position so now we're going to set the left position so we've added all the right information already we've updated this we've updated the button we've added the picture we've added the name we've added the text now what i want to do is i want to place it directly wherever we want it so we're going to set the left in the top position so dot left is going to be equal to kanban dot cells in this case left position we can use any row it doesn't matter one but the column is going to be very specific to the task column that we would send task column dot left okay so that's it dot left all right so we've set kanban dot cells any row we want task column dot left and the top position dot top is going to be equal to the top position we've already put into a double variable top position set top position of the card and this is going to be the set left position set 
left position. Okay, so now that we've got the top position, we've got the left, I also wanna make sure that we have the width, right? Just to make sure that we have the right width. I want the width to be whatever the width of the column is. So we can set the width is gonna be equal to, basically it's gonna be this, right? Whatever we have here, plus the width. So the width is gonna be equal to this cell, dot width, dot width. That's gonna make sure that we set the width of that. And I wanna do it a little bit less than that, so it's gonna be dot width minus two. So that should be fine. Okay, so dot cells. All right, so Kanban equals cells, the width of the column minus two. I don't want it to take up, I wanna be slightly less, which should be sufficient. And now what I wanna do is I wanna set the height. Now the height's gonna be different, right? We, we might want a full card height. Remember I showed you that we, they're gonna be expanded, but I wanna know based on this, notice expand all tasks or we can reduce them. So the height might be the top position, so it might be different. So we wanna set that. Actually what I would wanna do is I wanna update the top position. Sorry about the height, the height's gonna stay the same. I wanna set the top, is the next top position, right? But what is the next top position? Is it gonna be the full width of the card, for example? Let's let's duplicate that and go over sample. The top position is gonna be here, right? But what about the next one? The next one, is it going to be here, right here, right here? Or is it going to be here, right? Remember, we, we wanna show whether they're expanded or not. I need to know what the next position is. And this can be based on whether we're expanding them all. Expanding is gonna look, the top position is gonna be here, or is the top position gonna to be here? So it's based on a setting here. It's gonna be based on this setting here, based on whatever's in B10. If B10 is true, then we're going to set these to show up uh, not on top of each other, but below each other. So that the next top position is gonna be whatever the height of this is, plus whatever this, whatever the top position is. Otherwise, we're gonna set a specific top position here. So basically, I need to differentiate which one, and that's gonna be based on B10. So if we look and if we unhide these rows here, we take a look at B10, B10 is gonna be expander show based on whatever this is. So B10 is gonna tell us the top position. Is the top position going to be here, which it is now, or is it gonna be collapsed, which is gonna be about like here. So now we just need an if-then statement to differentiate that inside the code because we need to set that next top position for the next one. So if Kanban dot range, or excuse me, let's see dot range, and we can use dot range, B10, B10 dot value equals true, then what do we do? So then we're gonna call this expanded, right? Expanded, let's spell that right. Okay, so then if it's expanded, then what I wanna do is I wanna set the height Kanban dot cells, because we're focused on row 100, row 100, and the column is a variable here. Task, column, and that the value of that, what's the value gonna be? It's gonna be equal. Remember, we wanna set, basically, all I'm doing now is resetting this top position based on this, based on the, the height of this, plus a little bit, it's gonna be there in the top position. So it's gonna be the top position, value equals dot top position of that, let's say plus the height, plus dot height of it. And I'll add a little bit more onto that, maybe plus two, plus two, because I don't want them to be directly. Else, else, what does that mean? Else, that means it's currently the collapsed view. In other words, I want to set a specific top position based on the top position of this, and then we'll add, let's say, 25 onto that. So we have that there. So else, let's say not expanded, not or collapsed, not expanded. It's called the collapse view, expanded or collapsed view. There's that C again, collapsed. That way we can have two different views based on that collapsed view. So else, this one we're gonna set, I want the, gonna copy this here, but instead of the height, we're just gonna add a specific one, let's say plus 25. So that's what we can set two different settings based on that. Okay, good, I like that there, that looks very good. So that's end with, that's just about it for this macro here. We'll correct any issues, there are usually a few issues. Next task, so end with, this is the end with for the specific group that we're working with, the Kanban, this group right here. This is for the shape ID, group card, this is for the card back, individual group items. So this one, now we got the end, this end with is for that entire group gonna loop through all the rows. Okay, so that looks very, very good. So let's uh, update that and we'll go ahead and save our work before running our macro and then we'll focus on any issues. I'm gonna run that macro, see what other issues we're gonna face. Application, we don't need that. Let's take a look at that. That should be apply, not application, right? We're applying sorting. I know everybody saw that but me. Okay, and then we'll take a look at this issue. Uh, <laughs> 
apply. Okay, let's take a look and the method of range. This found member member ID. Usually, when you have this, you've uh, we probably have a different one. So we want to make sure that we're using the find. Okay, I believe this should be member member, not member ID. Okay, and take a look at that. And then, all right, let's take a look at that. Okay, all right, let's say we've got one. Let's continue on. Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay, we've got uh, a specific design, urgent. Let's take a look at the task cards. One result here, that looks pretty good here. We have a stages backlog, urgent, so it should show up in red, member ID. Let's take a look at that. We can get rid of, we don't need this one, this sample we can remove here. That was just for our purposes here. This one we can also remove here. We'll remove some of those filters so we can see more of it. Okay, all right, I like that. Everything looks good. Now let's, what I wanna show is in this case, all priorities. We're gonna show all categories. And then let's refresh that. Now I've already assigned this here, refresh comma. This particular macro has already been assigned. If we take a look at this, refresh. So we've already done that previously. So we're gonna refresh that. Okay, that looks good. I do want to add in screen updating. We need to update the colors a little bit, but everything is looking good. All right, let's take a look inside the code. I don't want 21, I want 26 here. 26 and 26, I like that better. Let's change that to 26 here. 21 is not gonna work, that's okay. Let's refresh that, take a look at those colors. I got some nicer colors there. Oh, that looks good. And instead of gray, I'm gonna use a different color. I want green, I wanna show green here green here 26 so we don't want that all right we got it 24 25 26 22 i like that that looks good 24 25 26 22 this should be 26 and 22 all right i'm pretty happy with these final colors 24 25 23 26 that's gonna get us these colors here all those they're all prioritized notice in this case they're everything's good i like that we just don't need the bold on that probably not maybe the bold i'm not sure so all if you want to update that i'm going to undo the do some text here all right i like that let's looks pretty good make sure the top is set here everything looks good except for the bold eh, it looks pretty good okay good so we've got that now what i want to do is a few more things i want to run some code that automatically when we select on a specific this icon here, I want to show that. When I select on it, I want to show that. When I select here, how do we do that? Well, we've already added that. Notice that there's been a macro that's already been assigned to the original. If I right click here, excuse me, it's off the screen. Right click, look at the macro, say task display. Now that we have that same one, now we can go over that macro, task display. So let's go into that macro. It was a very simple macro inside our task screen. So all we're going to be doing is, notice that we have application caller application caller is the name of the shape that called that particular macro so what is the name of that shape if i take a look inside the name of the shape we've renamed it remember view card button we added that and then we want the task id so if i know that the task id is set remember all we need to do to load a task is place that task id directly in here so i need to extract that tax id from that particular button that created it so we can then click on that so again we can do that with just a little bit of code right here so we're gonna use the replace what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the view card button from the name of the shape that called the macro if I try to run this macro here it's gonna create an error why is that because there's no shape that called this macro I called it directly from here so that's always gonna create an error this particular macro when we use application caller it is only going to work when we call the macro from clicking on a shape so what i want to do is i want to take out the words view card button and i want to replace it with nothing what is that going to leave that is going to leave only the id notice that if i take this text out here what it's going to leave it's going to leave this particular task id if i take that id and i place it inside directly inside here what it's going to do is going to generate the task row if i've got a correct task row i can then load that task using a macro so we can do just that so all we need to do is in b7 place that id there then task show run the macro that's going to make sure that we are showing that so notice if we've hidden it and now if i click on that it's going to automatically show it right we want to show that information and then what i want to do this filter button should be down here notice we're going to have those filters here all right keep that from moving here bring it down here a little bit 
So what I want to do is if they're already hidden, I want to make sure that we're showing it. So we're going to run the macro that shows it. It's going to display all that task details in here. And then the last macro that we're going to run task load is going to display those details. So that's it. So we've already got that. So now what we want to do is I also want to filter based on that. When I filter, I want to filter based on a specific member. I also want to filter based on a project and I want to be able to move these. So how do we do that? So filtering is relatively an easy macro to write. Why is that? Because if I select on an employee here, what I want to do again, is I want to, excuse me, member, employee, whatever. If I want to do that, I just need to extract the member ID. So I need to get rid of this text. I need to extract this ID. And where do I want to place it? If you remember inside our tasks, we have already some filters already here. All I need to do is place it directly inside R3. Then I need to run the same macro that we just created. Then it's going to say only those IDs that are going to be those only those member IDs that are one or only those that are three. Three, right? Only the, those members with a specific ID. So that's relatively easy to write. We can write that right now. So let's write in that macro here. So inside the Kanban here, we're going to go down here. We're going to say member filter. So that's what we're going to. So with Kanban, that's the sheet that we're working on. And I want to do something if I want to. But also, again, we have this. If we click all, what do I want to do? If I select this one, I want to make sure it's for all of the members. So how do we do that? We want to make sure that the member ID in R3 is cleared out, that there's no members before running that macro again. So I need to know what shape called it. If, if it's the member shape, if it's this shape that called the macro, something called all member shape, then we're going to clear out any criteria that may have been added. So we can do that here. If the application caller equals all member shape that means the name of the shape then do something else do something else so what do we want to do if it's all then what i want to do is inside the tasks dot range r3 remember we, that's the one we just went over r3 is the cell that's going to handle that dot clear the contents clear any member id from that otherwise let's just let's put a note here let's put a note right here call this all members or oh, else it's been a specific member specific member okay, if it's a specific member then again we want to what we want to do is we want to extract that member id using in string we can do that using the replace so in this case i'm going to copy this here this replacing a value here that value is going to equal what equals using replace i want to remove the string replace application dot caller and what do I want to remove? I want to remove some of the text. So we can do this. There's different things, but here's a little bit of a tricky part. They might select member tab two here, or they might select the picture here. Notice we don't know which one they're going to select. So I can't just remove the text member tab. I can't just remove this text, right? Because what if they click on the picture? I want to make sure that the macro has been assigned to all of them. So all I did was uh, basically I want to remove seven characters seven characters so all i want to do is i want to know the left in fact the left of seven characters replacing that just remove that so removing the first seven characters if i remove the first seven characters here or if i remove the first seven characters here notice it's the same so we can do that it's going to leave me with the member id so we can do just that inside the code caller in this case replace what are we going to do replacing the application caller the name of the shape they called it in and then all what I want to do is I want to do the left application dot caller seven. I want to remove the first seven characters. What's that going to leave me on? And I'm going to replace them with what? I'm going to replace them with nothing. Okay, so what that's going to do, let me fix that. Don't need it twice here. No, not twice. Okay. All right. So we're going to replace the application caller. We're going to take the first seven characters out of that text, whatever they called it, and we're gonna replace it with nothing. That's gonna leave us with the member ID. So, and I'm gonna take that member ID, I'm gonna place it in R3. What's left after that? All we need to do is just run the macro, the con. all I need to do is run them this macro here, Kanban refresh. That's gonna automatically filter out those members here. So pasting that directly here, it's gonna run that macro, actually place it down here, but either one is gonna be just fine. Okay, so that's it. So now if I save the work, so all I need to do is make sure that we've um, taken this macro 
and applied it to the sample. If I, if I assign that macro to our sample and click OK, when I refresh this, it is this macro that's going to be automatically assigned to this. So when I click on Fred, it's going to show only Fred's. And notice we have some kind of strange things going on here. All we need to do is just use application screen updating in our refresh. So I'm going to add that into here in our refresh application dot screen updating equals true and then I'm going to add it false up above so that we can do that but I want to make sure before any exit subs here so it's really the sort that creates that often so we want to make sure after last exit sub equals false okay so now when we do that now we don't have that notice everything so now we're showing only Harold's now we're showing only Mary's now we're showing only Fred and now we're showing all of them Fantastic. Okay, good. I really like that. But what I want to do also is I only want to set specific projects. What if I only want to set a, a project? I want a list of all the active projects or maybe closed or open based on this. And I want to put them down here so that when I select on a project, I only want those projects to show up inside here. So how do we do that? Well, just a little bit of code. So let's do that down here. Inside our tasks, we've just written this one, member filter. I want project refresh. So I want to do something. I want to create a refresh, but I want to create a list of those projects. I want to take all the projects here and I want to place them and I want to put the project ID and the project name. And I want it based on the status. But how do we know whether we're going to show all the projects or or only the open projects. That's going to be based on an option here. Notice we have view closed projects. So right click here and we format the cells and we see that this connected to B13. So if we take a look at B13, we see that show closed equals true. So we want to view the closed projects. So if this is true, that means we're going to be showing all the projects, including those of which have been closed. So we've got a criteria here. It's going to be based on B13. If con member B13 equals true, then we're going to have no status, right? Because we want to show all of them. Otherwise, we will only want to show open. So if I then select this, viewing the closed tabs, this goes to false. Inside the project, this goes to open. So now we're only going to show those that are open. So the criteria is connected to that option. All right, so to do that, all I want to do again is run an advanced filter based on this, using our criteria, having those results come in here. Then what I want to do is I want to take the project IDs and I want to take the project names and I want to bring them into our Kanban board. I want to put the project IDs right here. I don't want to put, put the in column B and I want to put the project names in column D. So that's just a little bit of code to do that. So let's do that right now. So to do that, we're going to be focused on I want to clear any existing projects. First thing I want to do is any existing projects all the way from B15 through D and down. I want to clear the contents of all those cells. So we can do that right here. Kanban dot range B15 through D9999 dot clear the contents. Clear contents. Okay, so we're clearing everything else out. So we're going to focus pretty much on the projects. So with projects, that's the sheet here making sure we got the sheet name. And then what I want to do is, again, the last row equals. So we're going to make sure the last row is going to be equal based on A99, getting that last row. OK, so if the last row is less than three, then we're going to exit the sub. Now we're going to run our advanced filter. Now the advanced filter is going to be based on uh, all of our columns here. So we're going to look in the project. It's going to be based on relatively A2 all the way through C in the last row. So we just need to update that A2 through C, the last row. Advanced filter. Our criteria is going to be located from G2 through G3. And our results were going to appear in I2 through J2. So we're going to change this from I2 through J2. And also we're going to focus on the results. Now I need to know the last results row. So last results row is going to be equal to three. And I'm going to switch that order up a little bit. So, so the last results row is going to be equal. This case is going to be based on column I, getting the last results row. I want to make sure that we notice if it's less than three, then we can exit the sub. That means there's no results row. Okay, so we have the last results row. Now what I would like to do is I'd like to sort them, right, based on the ascending. I want to sort those projects so it's equal to find. So with dot sort, running that sort, I want to sort the projects based on names so that they're alphabetically. First thing I want to do is sort the fields. We want to clear those fields. So sort fields clear. And after we sort the fields, I want to add a key to that. So sort, again, focus on the sort here, sort fields, and we're going to add, and this time we're going to add a key. So what is that key? That key is going to be located here inside based on the name. So it's going to be J3. So we're going to set the projects, have to call out that sheet, dot range. J3 is where it's going to be going. J3, 
All right, so what I want to do is I want to sort on, sort on, and of course it's going to be value, sort on equals Excel sort on values. And the order I'm going to use, in this case, it's going to be ascending. So the order is going to be equal to ascending, Excel ascending, right? I want it from A to ascending. And then also what I want, the data option is going to be normal. Data option, as it always is, option is going to be equal to Excel sort normal. Okay, taking a look at that to make sure we got it right. Projects, J3, sorting on, sort on values. The order is going to be Excel ascending. The data option is going to be sort normal. Okay, so now all we need to do is set that range. So set the range is going to be here. Set the range. What is that range going to be equal to? In this case, we want to call out the sheet again. Projects dot range and the range is going to be based on i3 all the way through j i3 through j and the last results row last result row that's considered and the last thing is dot apply make sure we get that apply right okay so now we got applying that application very helpful okay and then end with so that's going to sort them once they're sorted alphabetically i just want to bring them inside our kanban so we can do that with this kanban and I'm going to bring them in two different statements because I also want to bring the project ID in column B and I want to bring the project name in column J. So Kanban dot range B15 starting out in row 15 through B and the last results row. Last result row. Now, of course, our results are going to come from row 3, but they're going in fifth, row 15. So I need to compensate for that by adding 12 plus 12 on that dot value is going to be equal to inside our projects dot range i3 i3 through i and the last results row and the last results row so once we have that that's going to bring in our project id so because our project id is very important we're going to have to filter by project id so we need to know that Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and we're going to update that for the project names. So our project names are coming in column D. So we're going to use the same row, so that's not going to change. And then, of course, they're going to directly come from column J. So inside J, inside our projects is where we're going to come from. J. Okay, so that's our project names. So once we have that, we're pretty much set up for that. We don't need to do anything else. So we're going to run that and make sure that we have that. And of course, I want to run this macro directly when we select that option box. So I want to know that here. So that's the macro that I want to run when I select this. View, open or close. I'm going to assign that macro and place that in there. It was already assigned. So when I click that, oh, that's cool. I forgot to show you that. That's working good. Expand all. Notice we have, I forgot to show you that. So notice it's working. So remember, we're adding 25 to that. I forgot to mention that. So that's cool. Okay. So this one view projects i already had some conditional formatting notice our project ids came in here all four were viewing closed but i want to view unclosed it's only going to show three right because we have that criteria inside the project now only showing open so john's custom app is not located in our results because it has been closed already and it is that for therefore not okay so now what i want to do is when i select on one of these projects i only want to show this only those projects from that so how are we going to do that well what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the project id associated on the selected row and i'm going to place that project id right inside here once i place that in here it's going to we're going to run that refresh and it's going to only be those projects here so how do we do that well that's on the selection change event so let's write up a selection change event when a user makes a selection change on this and i want to make sure that there's actually a value in b okay so that's going to be on the sheet itself focused on our kanban sheet right here this is the sheet we're focused on here and it's going to be a selection change right here so if the user makes that selection change we want to do what is the target here so inside the selection change first of all if they uh, select larger if target dot count large is greater than let's say two then exit the sub then exit sub this prevents errors so now we have we're going to focus on this what are we going to focus on? i'm going to focus on d if they make a selection based on between d15 and d let's just say 999 large water project is nothing and i also want to make sure that b contains a value and range b and the target dot row dot value does not equal empty then do something then do something right i want to make sure that we actually have a project ID. what do i want to do well all i want to do is take whatever's located in b in the target row and place it directly inside p3 so we can do that from here so tasks dot range p3 
key three dot value is going to equal to range and again all we've done here we could do this range b and the target dot row dot value but i also want to do something else i also want to place i want to know what row we selected so that we can highlight it i've added some conditional formatting here i want to know that selected project in b12 i want to know that so how are we going to do that well we can copy this here b in the target row and i want to put that inside b12 so range b12 dot value is equal to b in the target row set project id we can do the same thing here setting the project id setting the project id also in the task that's going to be for the criteria set project id for the criteria to run our advanced filter once we have that criteria all we need to do is run our macro to refresh it kanban refresh there we go so that's it so all we do that's it and now we also have conditional formatting that's already been set up so i'm going to save our work and now when i select a specific it's only going to show those projects notice fredder's website fredder's website everything else grocery store and i've already had some conditional formatting. let's just take a quick look inside that conditional formatting and of course conditional formatting manage rules i've set it up based on the specific rule that rule is if b12 is equal to b15 whatever we've selected b15 meaning the row the selected row the target row here b starting at b15 so we know that's the one that's going to affect and we want to make sure that b12 is not blank that means whatever project we've selected that means whatever b in the target row if it's equals this four here is equal to four here it's going to highlight that row one here it's going to equal one here it's going to highlight that row and we've all now what about all projects what if i want to select all projects if i select d14 i want to do something i want to what do i want to do well basically what i want to do is i want to clear out whatever's in p and i want to run the macro again so we can do that here if we select d14 so in fact down here if not intersection in this case d14 d14 if they select on d14 we're going to do something else then i want to clear out whatever's in p3 so we can do that here range so we can do a few things actually i want to do a few things b 12 i want to clear out the contents there so i want to clear out any selected b12 dot clear contents okay clear clear out project clear clear out project id and i also want to clear from the tasks tasks we've got it down here already task p3 i just want to clear the contents out here so we can just copy that tasks p3 dot clear contents and then refresh the kanban so that way if they select clear clearing out the criteria and selecting it so now when I run that combo and I click on all projects, let's select something else, click on all projects. We're going to select all projects. Notice we could also highlight that row, but I think it's okay that we do. So now we're showing all projects again. Okay, great. So I've shown you how to use the criteria, but now while we're on the sheet, why don't we set the criteria here, here, and here? If the user makes a change to F3, H3, or J3, we want something to happen. So let's do that's a worksheet change. So if not intersection, making a change again to f11 j11 or h11 so let's update that f11 j11 or h11 then what are we going to do then it's relatively simple any change they make then just refresh kanban refresh and why does that why is that going to work automatically why do we we don't need to set any of the criteria why do we, why do we not because our criteria are already set here based on the formulas notice show priorities show categories and display from date those are based on formulas so if we look in here and we see the priority based on a formula priority based on a formula category based on a formula update date also based on a formula so we've already set our criteria here so all i need to do is run that so now if i only want to show a specific priority let's say i only want to show urgent it's automatically going to show that based on that or if i only want to show high it's only going to show that our criteria is already set based on a formula and based on the date or maybe we only want to show a specific category let's say we want to do design i don't know if we have any design here scope we've got scope here scope we only want to show scope so now we can filter beyond that okay we i should probably have a clear one here right i don't have a clear in other words it would be nice to have one button that said went to all categories or something like this but that's okay you get the point you can create that okay fantastic so we've got that already set up now all we need to do left is just the two macros one to move it and the other to allow us to drag and drop anywhere we want 
that's it and then we'll be done okay so basically what i'm trying to do is when a user selects on this arrow i want it to go to the next available position down in the column below so if they select on this it's going to move over if they select on this it's going to go move to the next column the first available space based on that so we can do that in just a little bit of a macro back into the kanbans and we're going to call this kanban move cards so what do i want to do on this one so this one, we're going to focus on this one, the Kanban, of course. So it's going to focus on with Kanban. And now what I want to do is I want to know, I want to isolate that task ID. Inside this button here, right here, we have that. It's called move card button 19. We know that 19 is the task ID. So to isolate this, I need to remove the words move card button. That's what I need to remove from that to extract that task ID. So to do that, we're going to say the task ID is going to be equal to replace we're going to replace it with what application caller that is the name of the macro excuse me the name of the shape that caller and we're going to remove what we're removing this move card button we're going to replace it with nothing what that's going to do is going to leave only the task id once it's called isolating the task id isolate task id once we've isolated it we can work with it so we know the card name let's set the card name the card name we know is a very specific card name. The entire card name, we want to move this entire card name. It's called task card and then the task ID. So we can set the card name to do just that, the task card here and plus the task ID. So doing that, we just need to set that inside a new variable. Card name is going to be equal to task card and the task ID. Set card name because I need to move it, so I need to associate that. So if what i want to know is if they make sure that they moved it so we're going to set that up i want to make sure that the first thing is i they can't go beyond this right i want to make sure that they're not going but what it is this equals column take a look at this so i want to make sure that it's not beyond column 11 or anything like that so i want to make sure the left position doesn't go beyond that right because they can't move it beyond that okay so the first thing what we want to do is if the shapes if dot shapes card name that's the one we're working on that entire group dot left is greater than or equal to let's use use j1 right j1 dot range j1 i want to make sure that they're not moving beyond the last column they can't move it back not dot valley but dot left dot left what is the left position of the last column then i'm going to tell them something message box something like cards cannot be moved beyond the last column beyond the last column right they can't go beyond that and let's see okay beyond that let's just put in let's kind of let's instead of last column let's put beyond the let's add in something dynamic in there because it could be beyond the and let's go ahead and put in whatever's inside j13 dot range j13 that way in case they change the name so for example i want beyond the closed column or whatever they've put in here i want to put in whatever's in j13 i want to put in that so beyond the closed column and space column it's a little bit more helpful to exit exit sub can't do anything unless we try to move it beyond that place okay assuming that they're not in the last column we know we can call we can move it so first of all the task column is going to be equal to dot shapes card name i want to know the current column card name dot top left cell the top left cell dot column i want to know the column so the column that's the column but i want to move it to the next column so the task column is going to be called that plus one good so we have that so i want to set the top position the top what is the new top position the top position is going to be equal to dot cells remember we're keeping that top position in row 100 so 100 dot task not comma actually task column dot value so that's the top position we're always keeping it there so focus on that with dot shapes now we're going to focus on that entire group T card name we're going to replace it we're going to move it okay so what is that dot left the dot left position of that new location is going to be equal to kanban in this case dot cells one we can use row one the row the row doesn't necessarily matter but it's the column that makes all the difference so the task column dot left so that's the left position of that but i also want to set the top position the top position is going to be dot top dot top position it's going to be equal to the top position 
Okay, good, so we've got that. Now what I wanna do is I wanna update the left position. Now what I wanna do is I wanna update the top position. Update top position. I wanna do it both in the existing cell. So what I wanna do is here's what I mean. If I move this one over, I need to update the top position to be here. And I also wanna update the top position of the previous one lower. So basically this one's gonna increase, this one's gonna lower. Okay, so we can do that with the following lines of code, but it's going to be based on whether we're expanding tabs or not, right? If it's going to be based on this, I need to know whether how much we're moving over. So it's going to be based on whatever's located in the B10, format control, and then B10, right? So we can do that with this lines of code. So update the top positions if kanban.range b10.value equals true, then we're showing the full card, then the height then else so else and and if so we've got so if b10 equals true we're going to do some things kanban dot cells row 100 task column dot value is going to be equal to the top position top position of that plus the height of it right the entire height of that card plus two but what i also want to do is i want to do something basically like this but for the previous cell, task column, the previous column, the one that moved from minus, right? But in this case, the top position is going to be equal to minus the height, minus two. In other words, we're reducing, right? I have to reduce. If I move this one from here to here, I need to reduce the top position. I need to reduce this one and I need to increase this one, okay? Because we're going to reset that. So that's going to be the task column minus one, right? The original task column minus, we're just subtracting. It's going to be the top position minus the height minus two, okay? So that's going to cover it. Okay, that's only if we're using the full cards, but what if we're using this one? What if we're using the uh, expanded? This one here, we're only going to increment 25 pixels up, 25 pixels that separate them. So we need to also update this. I want to increase this one by 25, and I want to decrease this one by 25 to do just that. So else, let's just call this expanded, and then we'll call this shrunk or not expanded, either one, okay? Uh, shrunk because they're shrinking. In this one, we want to increase this. So in this case, this one here, the cell is going to be here, is going to be equal to basically whatever the top position is, plus 25, incrementing it just 25. And also inside this, we're just going to decrease it by 25. So we can just copy this here. This one, the, the previous cell task column minus one is going to be the top position minus 25. That way we're going to set the existing and the next one automatically, the previous one, I should say. Okay, so we've set that up. So we've updated the positions, the top position. We're good to go. But now what I want to do is if I move this one to here, what I need to do inside this specific task, I need to update it from to do to in progress. And what do I mean by that? This particular task, it needs to go from to do, whatever it's wanted, and inside column I in the task, I need to find the database. I need to know what row it's on. I need to go into column I and I need to change it from to do to in progress inside the database. So we need to do just that. We need to find it first. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're gonna, okay, let's call this update stage in database. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna set the found task is gonna be equal to tasks.range then in this case, task ID, we're looking for that task ID. We already have the task ID. We're going to find it. What are we finding? We're finding that task ID. We've already got that. And then Excel values, Excel whole. Okay, so we're looking for that. Now we're going to see if it's found. If not found task is nothing, then it's been found. Then we know it's been found. What are we going to do if it's been found? Then I want to update that. Okay, so we don't need the end if because it's one single line of code. So we don't need that. Then what do we want to do? Inside the tasks dot range, we're looking for column I. And what is that row? The row is going to be the found task dot row. That's the row that it's been found on. So we know the row dot value. What is that value going to be? It's going to be equal to whatever is in row 13 and the task column that's the name so value equals dot cells row 13 in this case and also what is that column it's going to be the task column whatever the value in that dot value is going to 
be our update the task stage. That stage is going to update that in there. That's good. That's end with. That's all we need to do. And we're going to test it out. It is that macro that we're going to assign to that arrow. So all we need to do is copy this macro here and apply that to our sample. So this is our sample here. Right click here assign the macro, paste that in, it was already assigned to me actually. Then all we need to do is just refresh, you know, once we refresh, it's gonna assign that macro here. So we'll try that out. All right, let's take a look. Notice how, it, notice how it jumped down, it didn't jump down. Why is that? But if I click it again, it does. Well, also explain something. You see how it's so close. Let's take a look at zoom in. Look how it's so close to the edge. It's actually in the previous column, right? So when I place these, I really should place it right about here, right? It's too close to the previous column. It's gotta be a little bit over there. So why don't we do that? When we refresh that, notice how they're just too close. They're, they're recording the previous column. It works so why don't we do that let's update that when I refresh the column I'm gonna place it exactly a little bit over the edge not quite on that I think that's gonna help and I'm gonna make it more secure so how do we do that well that's gonna be inside the refresh so I really want to get it right off the border so that's gonna be inside our Kanban refresh so if we scroll down here to the left position when we set that left position what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one I'm just gonna get it off that border right there and now well, let's take a look, expand and drink. Okay, so now we've got it slightly off the border, which is what I want. Notice it's not, if we zoom in, notice it's not on the border. So it's gonna record the right column now. And all I need to do is just move it over. Perfect, and move this one over. And notice that we've moved this one over, it kind of collapsed it. So what we want to do is we wanna make sure we're updating it. We updated it too much here. So again, updating it, notice it's not setting right. So let's update that a little bit to make sure that we have the right order. So if we move this one over, I'm gonna make those updates inside the code right now. So let's look, take a look at this. Okay, so all we need to do in here is actually take whatever is in here and deduct the height. So it's not gonna be the top position, it's gonna fix that. So basically I'm gonna take whatever's in here and deduct the current height we don't need to do minus two that's going to be sufficient and I'm going to do the same thing inside here whatever's currently in here and just subtract 25 that's exactly what I want here so it's doing that so now when I move something over here let's move it over here and now I move this one over here it's automatically going to move to the bottom I like that better okay very very good the last thing I want the two more things actually one when I select on this I want to be able to drag and drop it there's two macros so I want to be able to dress select on this and then drag and drop it wherever I want so if I want to move this back to a location I can do that with drag and drop so we're gonna write two small macros to do just that one macro is gonna be when we actually select the task the other macro is gonna be when we check for the move so the first macro is gonna happen when we select a task the next macro is gonna run a loop and see when we just wait for a move it's gonna to wait to see if we've moved it somewhere so first thing we're gonna do is select a task so with Kanban, I'm gonna do this. All right, task ID is gonna be equal to, again, I wanna basically take out that task ID, determine that, replace the application color, and then this way we're gonna remove that card back, just as we've done before. So card back, we're gonna remove that text, and it's gonna leave us exactly with that task ID. So again, isolate task ID. ID very important okay so when I have that what I want to do now is I want to set a card name the card name just as we did before is going to be equal to the task card and the task ID okay so what I want to do is I want to set the left position of that so I want to make sure the first thing is when I've selected it if I if it's uh, let's say we have it on here the first thing what I want to do is I want to make sure let's see expand all there we go the first thing I want to do is I want to bring it to the front when I select it I want to bring it to the front so that we can see it right we may want to view it so that we can use Z order for that so we can do that in dot shapes let's do card name dot z order dot z order and what do we want to do i want to bring it to the front so bring to front bring to the front i want to bring it all the way to the front in front of everything else in case it's not visible in case we're shrunk in the cards so that's going to bring it to the front okay so put that in bring to front of other cards now once we've done that what i want to do is i want to set the current left position i know i want to know the current left position and i want to know the current top position because if it changes i need to check that has it been changed 
Is the left position changed or is the top position changed? So what I want to do is I want to record the current condition of it, the current location. And we can do that through here. I'm going to unhide these here. And I'm going to put just this little table. We're going to put that task ID here. I'm going to put the left position here in P9. I'm going to put the top position here. And I want to know if it's been moved or not. So inside P9 is going to take the current left position. Inside P10 is going to take the current top position. I'm going to put that in here. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So dot range P8, I want to put that task ID there. P8 dot value is going to equal, I want to know the task ID, equals task ID. Inside P9 dot range P9 is going to take on the left position. P9 is going to be equal to, in this case, dot shapes card name dot left position. I want to know set current left position. And I'm going to do the same thing with the top position, if I can get the spelling right, ever. Okay, so we've got that, the current inside P10 is going to do that. So all I'm going to do is going to copy this, and then I'm just going to make some updates to that. So instead of this, P9 is going to be P10. P10 is going to take on the current top position so that we know I can check in another macro, I can check to see if it's changed. So check the current top position. Okay, once we have that, I also want to make sure that P11 is set to false. So it has not moved. I'm going to set it to false. If that changes to true, it's going to be that. So dot range, and I'll show you why that's important coming up in the next macro. P11, we're going to set that equal to false. Set task move to false. Equals false. Set, because it hasn't been moved. Once it's been moved, it's going to go to true. Set task move to false. Now we're going to run a macro. Now when we select it, what we're going to do is we're going to run a macro. That macro is going to continually check for changes. It is this macro right here called check for move. So I'm going to copy this macro if I can. Hopefully I can. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it right here. Run macro to check for move. And that's the last macro we're running today for move. Thanks for sticking with me on these long trainings. I really do appreciate it. Okay, so it is this macro going to run. All that we're going to do is take this macro and assign it to the back of this. So if we take this macro, we can use our sample. This back here, this one right here, this card right here, assigning the macro. Right click and assign the macro. Sorry, it's off the screen here. Assigning that macro. So Kanban select task. Click OK. So that way when we refresh it, when we refresh the Kanban, it is that macro that's now assigned to every single one. If we click assign macro, we see it's already been assigned to that. So when we select a card, we want something that when I select this card, I want the position. I want 19. I want the left position, the top position false. So everything's working good. And now we're going to run that macro. It is this macro check for move that we're going to run right now. So with Kanban, again, the same sheet. We're going to do that. First of all, I want to know to make sure that P8 can't be empty, right? We need to have a task idea. For some reason, P8 is empty. We cannot move on. We can exit the sub or select a correct. So if dot range P8 dot value equals empty, then exit the sub. Nothing we can do if we don't have a correct task ID. Okay, so now we can assign the task ID. It's going to be located inside P8. So copy this here and equal to P8, set task ID. Once we set the task ID, what we're going to do is we're going to run a count. Remember, I want to wait a certain amount of time, allow the user, when they've selected it, to go that. And actually, one more thing I want to do. Actually, I forgot to do that. I want to still notice how it came to the front. That's perfect. That's what I want to do, bring it to the front. But I also want to select this task. One thing in here. Right here, I want to do one more thing, dot shapes. This one, card name, I want to dot select. I want to select that, select shape. That way it gives the user the ability to move it. Right? So when I select this, now it's going to be selected. Now they can move it around, right? So that's one thing I wanted to do. So inside this check for move, once they've selected it, what I'm going to do is I want to wait a certain instance. I want to create a count and then a delay and give them some time to move it so that this macro continually runs and gives them a certain amount of time to move it before the macro ends. So we can do that. So we're going to do for count delay. This is already a long variable equals one to let's just say 100,000. 100, 000. 100 Thousand that should be sufficient, and then closing our loop. Next count 
delay. And how long do I want to run this for? I want to run this for a long time unless P11 changes to true. So first of all, I'm going to do events. What this is going to do is allow us to do other things during when the macro is running. So we want to be able to do that. So, but I want to do it until some point. If for some reason, if before the count is over, if the user has moved it, then we can do something else. So if dot range P11 equals true, then end it. So equals, let's do equals true, then end, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark, as soon as we've determined that the user has moved it, we're gonna end it, right? So we'll show you that in just a moment. So with, we're gonna focus on this card here. Dot shapes, in this case, I guess we could set the card again. We could do this here, card, name just done up here we could do it up here same thing here counts card and make it a little easier for us card name a little more clear card name so now with shapes card name we're really focused on this so what do we want to do i want to see if it's been moved well how do we know if it's been moved we need to check to see if the left position or the top position is the same as it was when we clicked it so we can do if dot left the left position does not equal what that's located in p9 kanban dot range p9 p9 dot value if the left is different or maybe the top is different right has the if the left position is not this if the top position is not this then we know the user has moved it so we can do that dot range p9 or dot top position does not equal kanban dot range p10 dot value then we know it's been moved then card has been moved we want to do something okay so we know it's been moved, but what I want to do is I want to check for an incorrect move. What if they move it all the way up here? What if they move it here? Or what if they move it over here or way down here? We need to check to make sure they've moved it in the correct position. So we need to make sure, otherwise if they moved it to an incorrect position, we're just going to refresh the Kanban. So to check that, we do that if, in this case, dot left is less than let's say e1 right they can't move it beyond the left of e1 right can't be left can't be farther left than column e so if the dot left is equal to kanban i need to call out the sheet again because i'm within the card dot range e1 we can use any row that's fine e1 dot left if it's less than that or right or maybe the top position is too far to the top so we need or Maybe the dot left is greater than J. Dot left is greater than Kanban dot range. We can use J1. In this case, oh, let's go K1. K1. J1's fine. That's a proper column. Dot left, let's say minus five, a little bit less than that. Or maybe the top position, dot top position is less than what we can't be can't be less than let's say row 14 right we got to make sure it's not less than that or the top position is less than let's say kanban dot range what is the range let's call this e13 that's on any column would be fine e13 dot top position that one if it's less than that then we need to tell the user to please move it to a correct row message box please make sure to move card within the stage columns so now the first thing we want to do is i want to i want to refresh it so kanban without any changes kanban refresh so we've got that and then exit the sub nothing else we can do if they haven't so give them another opportunity after we've refreshed so assuming that they've made changes but the changes are correct they within that now we, we can do is we can set some information up so we know that that so i want to know the task column the task column is going to be what where have they moved it to is going to be equal to the top left cell dot column what is that column so that's going to be the top left column of the new location top left column new column okay so we've got the new column and i also want to know the top position top position is going to be equal to remember we've already set the top position going to be based on row 100 equals kanban dot cells 100 task column what is the position of what is the top position of for the new column it's going to be located in row 100 task column dot value so that's a new top position. So now what we can do is we can set the left position. We can set the top position. So dot left is going to be equal to Kanban dot cells. We can use any row we want. Task 
column dot left actually we need to play dot left plus one remember we're not we're not going to be right on the left we want to move it a little bit over set left position okay good and also again we want to update the top positions here we want to update the top positions just as we did here on when we moved them remember that okay so we can do that right here i want to update that here based on that the shapes called updating the top positions updating the left um, and the top positions here so we need to do that right here updating that so i'll add that in just a moment so in fact let's do this update top position top positions inside row 100 positions okay so how do we do that i'm going to paste that here because it's based on that so if b10 is true we're going to set the task column minus one setting the previous but this one we want to know the previous column we don't want to know what the previous column was well we can make it easy why don't we just add a variable let's make it a little bit easier let's do this call this previous column set that up pretty easily there and then we can put the previous column inside here and then we just set it up so we always know what the original column was that they've moved it from so all we need to do is add that column inside p12 when we select it we're going to set that up and then we'll just add a variable so here inside p12 dot range p12 i want to put the value equals what is it it's going to be the column so what is that column it is going to be that card name in this case dot shapes what is the shape card name dot top left cell dot column okay so that's going to be in p12 so that way when we select something we want oh, we need to, don't need this here in fact i'm going to just going to pause this i don't want to run this macro just yet we're not completed with it this macro i don't want to run just yet so i'm going to reset that okay reset that so all i want to do is make sure that that would column nine right we want to make sure that that column equals column i think we need to add one to that that's perfect okay good we're good so i want to say that i want to know the previous column why do i want to know the previous column because i want to update when we move something i want to update this in the previous column so we're going to add that variable now i hadn't added that before so i'm going to add that in the long run just in case we put it in here so we can do it right here in the long variables i'm going to call this previous column previous column as long then what we want to do is once we know the previous column, I'm going to put that in a variable inside our new macro right here, all the way down here, setting that previous column up. Got so many macros here. Right here is where I wanted to do it. Task ID, previous column, previous column equals dot range P12, previous column. So we're going to set that previous column because I want to reset that. I want to know what's in P12 and reset it based on that. So when we go down here, now what we want to do is I want to update the top position of the previous column. So not the task column, the task column, previous column. We know the previous column, right? We want to subtract basically the height. I want to subtract that, remember? And again here, because we've moved it from that previous column, right? So we're going to take it out. So now when we move something, I want to know the updated column. If we're using the shrunk version, we're going to subtract it by whatever the, whatever the current value is minus 25. Whatever the current value is minus the full height. Okay, good. So I like that. So we've got the previous column. Now we can continue with just a little bit of our code inside here now that we've updated the heights of that. So also what I want to do is when I move something, I need to update the database just like we did before. We need to update. So if we're moving it from the to do, we're moving it to the completed, I need to know what we're updating. We're going to move it to the completed. So I need to take this inside the to do here and I need to update it to, to complete it or whatever it is. So let's do that right now inside the code here. So again, we're going to do just like that. We're going to set the found task just as we did up here and update it. So we can just copy this since we've already set it up here inside. Remember when we moved here, right here, when we moved the task, this one right here, move, move card here. So again, I want to just copy this. All we need to do is update this, update the stage just as we did before. And we're going to bring that down right into here. So right here, so update the stage. We're gonna set the found task, task range, task ID. We've already done, taking care of the task ID right here. So we can set the find just as we did. If not found, if found nothing, all we need to do is update the tarot based on the task column row 13, just as we did before. Very, very simple there. So now once we've updated the task, I'm gonna set P11 to true. So in this case, so what that's gonna do is gonna stop the loop. Kanban dot range P11 dot value equals true so when we set that to true 
automatically, if it's true, we're going to end the do it. We're going to end this loop as soon as we've recognized the change. So that's all we have to do there. Okay, I like that there, putting that in here. Next to calculate, clearing that out. We don't need those extra spaces here, extra space here. And so this is the end width with our shape. This is the end width with our sheet. Okay, so we've got that, and we're going to do is save that. Now what we need to do is see if there's any issues. Now we can uncomment this out. Now we're ready for the drag and drop to move. Okay, that's going to work right there. And then what I also want to do is I want to make sure that, again, just to make absolutely sure that we've set true regardless of that. So before that, I'm going to set P11 to true no matter what. Okay, let's take a look at that. Let's refresh expand refresh and refresh our thing and take a look at that all right now when i select this it's going to be selected i want to move it over here perfect and i'm going to refresh that again to make sure that it sticks right that we have the new location i'm going to move it back over to the left here have it pinned down perfect and then again refresh here to make sure it pinned all right excellent excellent i like that way that looks let's click on here we can show a task we can hide our task and we have our drag and drop Kanban board in Excel. It's been an excellent training. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like these trainings, I've got a great mentorship program that's going to show you how to define, design, develop, and deploy your own Excel applications for passive income. I'm going to include the links down below. That will help us out. That full course is now ready. You don't need to actually go on a weekly module basis. You can actually have the entire course, all 132 hours at your disposal now all right thanks so much i cannot wait we'll see you next week don't forget to subscribe comment below and hit that like button we'll see you next week thanks so much